Good evening, guys. Happy Friday night. How's everyone doing here? Thank you so much for coming in. We've got a big, big night tonight. We've got Scotch Night. I am super, super pumped for Scotch Night. I've got some special guests here. I am here with Josh and Vito from Cast Strength. Go ahead and jump on, guys. What's going on, everybody? What is happening? Well, thanks so much for coming on. I've been looking forward to this. So I had Vito back on my channel a couple weeks ago now, and we yep. drank a whole bunch of bourbon. So I'm deferring to the scotch experts tonight, and we're going to try some scotch. You guys are going to school me on some stuff. So I'm ready for it. Yeah, it's exciting, man. I know you've been uh, been chomping at the bit to try a few of those there behind you. So Yes, yeah. yes. Um, I feel like scotch would be really easy for me to convert over to. So um, just based on the, the few things I have tried already. So. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> the thing is, like, I was so excited when you when you uh, started to review uh, scotches when you reviewed the Ardbeck Ten first, and I was like, you know, he's doing you 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 got everything, man. Like, it's you give yourself a bit more credit. You 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 handled that one pretty pretty solidly. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ardbeck can be one, especially that some people are really put off by if they're if they're if they're like coming from bourbon, right? If they're mostly a bourbon fan. And uh, it seems like you jumped right into it and, and loved it right away. Yeah, well, that's the problem with being a part of the uh, the whiskey tribe. It's like you got the <laughs> Ardbeg or the Lafroy fan club, and it's like yeah. you have to go with one. So I just jumped in with Ardbeg, and it's thank God I like the pita, I guess. <laughs> awesome. It's an interesting thing, too, because going back to what me and Jason were talking about last week in terms of introducing people that are predominantly bourbon drinkers into scotches, um, you don't find a lot of people that go in that hard that like at first, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but like you're an example. My first my first scotch was Isla Scotch. It was it was a Lafroy quarter cask. Mm -hmm. So um, every, everyone, if you if you hit it, it hits the right note for you. You just you're you're in. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen a bunch of people that uh, that we recognize in the chat. We got uh, my friend Cap and Make It Happen up there. We've got uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum. Uh, Steve A is in. Uh, who else do we have in here today? Christine Deems, DJ Beacon, Loch Ness. Uh, John Gunsel. Yeah, he lives down here in Austin. Hey, John. Steve, Steve, A. Steve A is just bashing me like normal. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Apparently, I'm only comic relief, and you know what? I'm oddly okay with that. <laughs> hey, hey, you do what you're good at and you stick with it, Vito. That's right. All right. So we've got a lot, a lot of scotches on the menu tonight. So we don't all have exactly the same scotches. I picked up a lot in the last couple of days. Um, yeah, you kept sending me messages like, I'm yeah. looking at this at the liquor store. I'm looking at that. Which one should I get? And you made some good decisions, man. You picked up. Yeah, I was definitely messaging Vito and Josh both the whole time, asking them questions about what I should get, you know. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But first thing we are starting with tonight, and this was recommended. This was the original scotch that Vito recommended to me when I asked him, hey, what is a good transition scotch for a bourbon drinker into scotch? He said Buna Haben 12. Perfect. So that's what we're now, Buna 12, I'm not going to talk about the bottles. I'm going to leave that to these guys because they know about it. We were just talking before stream. This is the new bottle, what the new bottle looks like. And then, Josh, I know you have the old bottle. We'll go ahead and show yours next. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to trust you. I don't know which one's new and which one's old, but uh, they're clearly, clearly different in the labeling. Well, I just bought mine like two days ago, so I would hope it's the new one. But you never know, I guess. Mine's been sitting around a while, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so, so you guys want to talk about the uh, the distillery a little bit maybe or maybe just the characteristics of the scotch a little bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, Boonhaven is uh, a kind of an odd one and it, it is always my recommendation as well. So Vito gave you the perfect suggestion. Uh, somebody that's a bourbon drinker, I feel like in, in Boonhaven, there's a bunch of uh, notes in there that would be uh, uh, friendly and, and uh, engaging to somebody who's used to like a bourbon flavor profile. You know, you've got some cherry, oak. Um, it's a little bit creamy as well. So it's it's nice and sweet. But what's kind of interesting about it, it's it's one of the classic examples of an Isla whiskey that's not peated. Or I've read some places that it's like tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny bit of peat. That much. I don't it doesn't know. seem peaty to me, but uh, anyway. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. And, and like I said, perfect suggestion. So... Uh, for, yes, for something coming from Vernon. This is um this is sherry finished, correct? Yes. 
Yeah, it definitely has a, a good amount of sherry influence to it. You can tell that from kind of the, to me, sherry always comes across as having sort of a berry uh, or, or like dark stone fruit character, as well as a little mm -hmm. bit of like baking spice character as well. So I don't know what about you, Vito. How do you, how do you pick up on sherry? And um, sherry, sherry always presents itself to me um, like deep, like deeper fruits, right? Like, like um, raisins, uh, dark grapes, plums, um with and like you said you nailed it with the baking spice i always get a little bit of that as well especially with especially with the glen goins which we'll talk about later but yeah um, yeah it's definitely a characteristic like almost like just think um like holiday holiday desserts and um like cranberry sauces and stuff like that mm. right yeah jason did say actually that i have the older bottle so Vito and i actually have the older bottle josh interesting uh, so it may have just been sitting on the shelf longer yeah so yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. So. In in Ontario and uh, Michigan, we get uh, we get the little bit of uh, the shaft yeah. in terms of all that. Yeah, it's delayed a little bit. Whiskey aces in the house. Mark Goins, Graham Thurston, uh, Miguel Torres, welcome in. I saw Amy. also uh, I saw also in the chat. Steve A has poured a Rumble Cask Reserve of Balcones in honor of Zach, and of course uh, Zach Pilgrim just passed away yesterday, kind of suddenly or very suddenly. Uh, so I want to go ahead and, and give a cheers to him. I've known known Zach about two years, and so it comes as a shock, I think, to everybody. And I can only imagine what the guys at Balcones and, and Zach's wife, Laurel, uh, you know, what they're dealing with right now. So cheers to Zach. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Well, so what do you get on that? Wow. Uh, I'll say that's a good recommendation for a good uh, a good starter. It's got definitely that. Um, now I described this when I was doing some Irish whiskeys that were sherry finished. Mm -hmm. It's like it's got that fruity note. It, it to me, it's more of a. I know you guys described it as like a darker fruit, but at least initially, it's kind of like a juicy fruit to me. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Uh, it, maybe it's just the the different flavor between bourbon and scotch too that makes it seem like it's just a juicier, juicier no, note. No, I can. No, when you say that, I can sort of, I can sort of see what you're what you're talking about. Like, so what I was. How I was saying before, like a little bit of like like a uh, darker grapes, like the red grapes, mm -hmm. like a super like fresh, uh, juicy grape, like when you bite into it, and a little bit of yes. a little bit of sweet, almost almost sort of like weird tartness. I'm not too sure if I'm describing that right either. Like from the skin that you get, mm -hmm. yeah, like the the tannins from the skin. That yes, are exactly. Slightly yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You kind of feel it like towards the back of your jaw a little bit. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Dan Trout, how's it going, bud? Sorry, I missed you. So for everyone, so, um, DH Sill asked, "Is this the Oogie or the Corey?" This is the Boonhaben Twelve. So we're still on the first uh, first pour of the night at the Boonhaben. Yeah, we're going to be progressing through. Uh, I think I think Ugadal and Corey Brecken are going to be <laughs> at the tail end here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're make a progression into those. So we don't want to ruin our palates too soon. <laughs> Um, so I don't. I guess I don't know, Chris. Like how much you know about the differences between malt whiskey versus bourbon. You know, American whiskey in general versus Scotch whiskey in general. Uh, I mean, like Not too much. I just know. in general, I know it's mostly all um, just barley. Like usually 100% barley. But I mean, mm -hmm. I could be wrong on that too. So yeah. Um, well, I mean. I, there are uh, things that are not barley, definitely made in Scotland. But uh, for for what we're drinking right now, the label says single malt. Mm -hmm. Right, which means it's 100% made of malted barley, and it comes from one distillery. Uh, right, versus a, a blended malt would be sourced from multiple distilleries. So, folks like uh, some of the Johnny Walker products, some of the Compass Box products, um, are, are, are blended malt. Uh, mm -hmm. You also have grain whiskey that's out there in Scotland, so which will generally be things like corn, for example. Right, uh, right. So that'll be a single grain scotch or a blended grain scotch, and then if you mix those two together and you get something like, uh, say, Johnny Walker Black, that's a, a blended scotch. It's got both grain and malt together. Interesting. Yeah. So, like, what about um Irish? Because they always say pot still grain. It's so like, what's the major grain in Irish? It's similar. Uh, it's a similar deal in in Ireland than it is in Scotland. So uh, if it if it says malt. On there, single malt on, a, mm -hmm. on Irish whiskey. That's got, uh, again, barley in there, but uh, the single pot still contains a combination of malted and unmalted barley. Okay. So that'll explain some of the different flavors then. Yeah. And they, you have the same thing, uh, you know, you have the grain whiskey that 
you can have single grain or, mm -hmm. or blended right. varieties that are done in, in Ireland as well. So the, the, the distinctions and the labeling and all that kind of stuff is similar between the two with a few key differences. Right. And you've been drinking a lot of Irish as well too. So yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm an Irish fan. I'll say that for sure. I've got, um, I'm actually gonna be putting out a review of the red breast 12 cast strength tomorrow. Is oh. that your favorite so far? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not gonna say too much, but it is just on a, on a completely another level that it, it really is. Yep. It, now, did you, did you try it? I'm not sure if you happen to see my review where I suggested mm -hmm. putting a little bit of water in there. Did you try it with a bit of water after the fact? Uh, okay. But not during the review. Did you did you enjoy it with the with the little bit of water or what did yeah what did, I did but I've never, you? I've never had the regular um just red breast twelve like the base red breast twelve so I was curious how it would compare to that with the water you know yeah to but me the uh, to me the cast strength is so much better but uh, there are folks that that prefer uh, you know a lower proof on it um, mm -hmm. yeah just you know personal preference but. Um, that's the nice thing about buying cast strength though, is that you can water it down a little bit. You can take it at full strength. You know, it's kind of up to you. Yeah. It gives you more options for sure. Yeah. Now I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, um, age with, uh, with scotch and bourbon. So like with bourbon, mm -hmm. a 12 year old bourbon is like incredibly old for, for bourbon in general, you know, and with scotch it's kind of like a, for a lot of them, like a starter level, like 10, 12 years. Yeah. Um, so I mean, obviously climate plays a plays a role in the aging process and all that but i guess like what are your thoughts on that for the, the scotches i've had that were 10 years i don't pick up as much of a barrel influence as i thought i would definitely you know turn it to bourbon or whatnot so i guess yeah about that i guess that's a key point we didn't really touch on earlier we were talking about you know whether it was barley or grain and whatnot but um to me it's not only the climate but it's the uh the refill casks versus the the new charred oak mm -hmm. right Right, the bourbon has to be matured in in new oak barrels versus scotches. Uh, either it, well, they they actually call it first fill if it's being filled a second time. Like it used to hold bourbon, and then they bring it over oh, to right, Scotland right. and they refill it. But um, uh, yeah, they they'll reuse a cask, you know, a handful of times until it's just kind of exhausted. Now, um, I think that's pretty cool, though. I mean, because it just picks up different flavors from each time it's filled too. So like it it could be completely different, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Whatever it was, uh, whatever it was holding previously. Uh, and, you know, I've heard that there's a joke between, uh, you know, there's a relationship of course, between the bourbon industry and the scotch industry because they, they use uh, each other's casks and, you know, the whole cooperage industry is kind of intertwined there. But I've heard there's a joke where, you know, the, the bourbon guys will say, oh, we'll uh, we'll send them over to you guys in Scotland when we're done getting all the good stuff out of yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, we'll take them when you get all the nastiness out of there. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Hey, well, Mike. Mike, Mike sorry, in the chat. Dan, good to see you. Hi, Whiskey She Wine. Thanks for coming in, guys. I'm loving scotch so far. I'll tell you, this was a great choice. This Buna 12. Oh. So I'm... I, I want. I always. Josh was the one that that suggested I buy that uh, when we first started kind of talking, because I I was I was shopping and I was like I was like I don't know what to buy and I was like I saw the bottle and I was like oh you know that kind of looks cool so I I sent a, a a picture to to Josh and Brad and I was like what do you guys think of this one and Josh was just like buy it <laughs> just do it just just buy it I got home and I and I and I poured it and I sat. I think I, we were on um, a hangout too that night and I just sat in the chair with my nose in the glass for like <laughs> 10, 15 minutes. Cause it's just so, so, so rich. Yeah, it is. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, an interesting thing, I mean, with, with Bunahaven or, or really any other scotch is you can, you can experience the same spirit from the same distillery at so many different ages Mm -hmm. and in different types of casks and uh, single single cask releases, uh, independent bottlings of which I've got one over here. We can talk about that a little, little bit later, which isn't quite as common, I think, you know, in, in the American whiskey industry. You do have some of those like like Van Winkle age statements and stuff like that. But for the most part, um, you don't get to uh, experience that same spirit as it matures to different ages, right? So if you, yeah. for, if you like this Bruno Hobbin 12, Next time you go look and maybe try the 18. Yeah. I, it was the same with Irish too, like with the red breast. I mean, they have like the 15, the 18. So it, it, you're, you're right. I mean, it's not quite the same with, with bourbon, but 
I'm digging it. And it's, it's, it for it's sure. funny because you were you were asking me the other day, Chris, about um, about like the 15 versus the 18 Buna Haben. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to wait until we were on the stream because I've I had both um, a couple of months ago at a friend's tasting, and I didn't like where the where, I love the 15, but at the 18, I was like, I don't know if I enjoy where this is going right now. No, oh, yeah, that can definitely be a thing where if yeah. you you can vastly prefer the more youthful one versus the older one. So it's, yeah, like it just goes to show it. that age isn't always better especially like i've had some very old scotches and it's like the barrel just starts to take over right and it starts to taste more like wood than anything else um yeah so it all just depends um saw a few other people pop up in the chat uh robert licorice is here that's cool hey robert um who else do we have in whiskey yeah. crusaders is in that's uh, matt zetrick also, yep. I just want to point out because uh, did I see he see um, uh, I whiskey she wines in the chat earlier? Yep, yep. I, love, I, I, I that's like my new favorite channel. <laughs> it's, yeah, they're doing some good stuff over there. It's 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 so interesting. It's so funny because she's she's just a your your wife. I don't know who's on the on the on the chat right now, but if it if uh, if I f and I forgot the name obviously I forgot their names. I'm such a I'm such a dummy. But uh, his wife is is such a good sport for doing this yep. and exploring with them. <laughs> awesome. Well, they had a live stream the other night, and they she tried the uh, what Ardbeg Twenty One was it? Ooh, is that, is that what it would be? The Twenty One year? There is a Twenty One. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So D, I think it was uh, Dustin DH Silv gave him a sample of that, and she tried it. And I mean, to me, it, to me, it seemed like a little bit of a waste of a sample. But who am I to judge? You know. I, I don't think you know. Um, it well it depends, right? Like I wouldn't say I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say waste of a sample. I mean, she got to try and see if that's something she would ever like. You yeah, know, that type of whiskey. And obviously, it's all about you know sharing with us us whiskey people. We love sharing with each other. So see, right. now it depends because I have I have some samples and a bottle that I refuse to share with <laughs> with yeah. with people with 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 uh, with people. So it's like this, yeah. this is mine. I'm not gonna let anyone touch this. I don't yep. care if you like whiskey. If you don't, this is mine. <laughs> Fair oh. enough. Yeah. No, no, I, I get you. Yeah. Uh, Dustin said the 22 year is what it was. 22 year. Ah, uh, the 20 something. Oh yeah. -something, yeah. I have a sample of the 20 something. I, of the 23 year 20 something. Yeah, there's several different varieties of the 20 something. I forget what the latest one was, but it's. I think I've, it's 22. Might be. Yeah. But I think I think our friend Daniel picked picked up a bottle. Not I have definitely had a pour out of that bottle. <laughs> and I had him, he brought it down to the house when uh, when Brad was in town. So I need to get Scott, it. I need to get uh, it Scott from my bourbon journey is in here, and I just saw Eric come in too. Thank you guys. Uh, thanks for coming in. Great stream tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I can't wait to crack the bottle. I've got it behind me, but I have not opened it up yet. But now I might have to with you guys talking about it. So. <laughs> Um, so I want to I want to I want to pose the t my my tasty notes of the Buna Haben to you, Chris, and see if uh, if it rings true. Yeah, because I'm just gonna pour a little bit more just because I had a bad day at work, so I'm just gonna pour some more. Well, well let me do that too, Beto, just to be fair. <laughs> I twisted your leg, eh? <laughs> so whenever I always I always end up like grouping every, like all my tasty notes together into like some sort of dish. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. So with with the Buna Haben Twelve, I always get like a massive scoop of French creamy French vanilla ice cream, right? With, mm -hmm. with a salted caramel drizzle, and um, you know those fa when you go to fancy restaurants and they have like the smoking enclosures that they put like yeah, in yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that with like just some mm -hmm. like with some smoke characteristic in there, just kind of like swirling around very gently, and then just just mowing that that bowl of ice cream <laughs> <laughs> no i could definitely see that and then e even on top of that i would throw some kind of fruit on there too like a like maybe a caramelized cherry yeah to me it's yeah. definitely a cherry yeah, yeah that's cherry. what i always cherry. always get right in front and then when you dive deep into it it's like oh there's everything else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and after i had just finished the glass here too like that smell like i got a lot more i always love smelling the glass after i finish finish a dram and I yeah. always get a lot more the barrel note. It came through on that. There's a there is a French term for that, and mm -hmm. I think Robert Roberts told me what that is probably three times now, and I can't ever remember it because my French is terrible. <laughs> but uh, there's a word for 
the uh, the smell of the glass after it's dried. I think Eric, well, Eric waits in the chat. Maybe he knows. Mm -hmm. Eric Wade probably knows too. Yeah. So I can uh, never remember the word, but uh, it's it's kind of awesome that they have a word for that. Yeah, I love doing that though. With, with like bourbon, I remember my first Buffalo Trace after I went to the distillery, Buffalo Trace Distillery. I went had a glass of something, whatever it was, and I smelled it afterwards. It smelled just like the Rick House, like exactly like the Rick House, and I was like, "Oh, that's so cool!" Brought me right back. Um, mm. I forgot what I was gonna say. Get it together, Vito. I know this is this is, typical, <laughs> this is very typical, Vito. Oh, so uh, Eric, um, the French term for the smell of the glass after the whiskey is empty. Oh, oh, now I remember what I was gonna say. Have you let your um, a glass of Ardbeg after you finish it sit overnight and smell it in the morning? Mm. No, but I will. I will tonight. You will do that tonight, and you're gonna text me in the morning and tell me. Absolutely. What, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Poop it to know. Well, apparently Eric Waite said poopy. I don't know if he's being serious or not. <laughs> <laughs> poupé? Is it? Is that? Is that French poupé? I I feel like I feel like that might not be right. What Eric is saying. <laughs> <laughs> if I know Eric, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Watch it be right though. All right. All right. I'm ready to move on to number two. As am I. So what are you yeah, pointing at? So I think for me, the next recommended in line was the Brooklotic, cl the classic Lottie. Yes. Yes. Now I'm really interested to see what you think of this because it's it's a unique whiskey, I think. And it's good uh, to actually side by side it with the twelve, the Buna twelve too, right? Because they're sort of <laughs> la la poopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because B the Buna Haben twelve and the and the classic Lottie are typically the two um, sort. "Quote unquote unpeated." Well, the classic light is completely unpeated, correct, Josh? The the what is the unpeated? Light is completely unpeated, right? Yep, it Just does say. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, and the Buna Habin's "quote unquote," you know, peated, but not really. Like those are the two entry islas that to, that people usually, you know, or talk talk about. So it's nice that you have both to try. So Robert yeah, came I came in with the term. He said uh, it's fond de ver. Fond de ver. Yeah. Bon de ver. All right. I kind of well, like that Eric. sounds more right than what Eric said. So I, I like Eric's full term though, Pepe la Poopy. <laughs> <laughs> so I've I've seen a lot of other people on other channels review this bottle, the full bottle. It's just a gorgeous bottle. Yeah, yeah. Brooklotti has uh, some super cool branding. I think they changed that the 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 bottle now, right, Josh? Uh, well, they changed the Port Charlotte bottles for sure. Um, I don't know about the, I think the Bricolati bottles stayed the same, but the Port Charlotte bottles, they made it different to distinguish on the shelf, you know, cause it was like, it, when I talked to, what was it? The distillery manager was in town doing an event and he described that, you know, it wasn't always obvious to people if they were picking up something, uh, Port Charlotte versus something from the Bricolati line, exactly what they were getting. If they weren't like a super informed, you know, whiskey nerd type, type, uh, consumer, cause the bottles look very, very similar and they're the same shape. Right. Right. Hmm. Um, I think I'm gonna pour the sh some sherry now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I have in mind too. Is the Glen yeah. Goyne? Yeah. So I, we're gonna pour some Glen Goyne 21. Ooh. Yeah. No, I don't have I don't have the classic Lottie, and I haven't had this pour in quite some time. So. So we started off with the same thing, and now Vito and I have the same thing, but classic Lottie could not be more different. <laughs> yeah, that's all right though. Now you both have had the classic Lottie before. Sorry, yes. I said that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. In in so, my sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so you'll have you'll be able to tell me if I'm anywhere near what I what I think about it. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Roughly. Uh, there's, kind of, roughly. <laughs> there's kind of a key note that uh, really stands out to a lot of people, and uh, it's it's actually the thing that I know a handful of people that really puts them off. Okay. But I'll be curious to see what you think. Mm. Oh man, Glen Goyne Twenty One is just <laughs> unbelievably <laughs> good. It's Christmas in a glass. It really is. And uh, it, I always, um, I, I think I mentioned it to you as well. Um, have you had the Akatoshian Three Wood? Josh? Me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always, I, I for the for a while, I was like, and I think still now, like this is just 
like because I love the three wood. This is uh like a like a much older, mature, fuller version of that. Yeah, yeah, a more refined version of that. Yeah. It's it's in that same. It's like it's like three wood is feels a little thrown together versus this. Yeah. You know? Um, versus, but this is just magnificent whiskey and like little, maybe a hair less of a sherry bomb than something like a Glendronic. Yeah. But still, obviously, just spent a ton of time in ex sherry casks. So, uh, Whiskey Crusader said he needs to try the 25. I think he's talking about the Glen Goyne 25. Just yeah. Correct. Just make, just, just double check because, um, I have some of the 25 that I can side by side this with right now. So Chris, talk to us about the, the classic lighting. What are you uh, getting? Mm. Um, well, initially when I first poured it, I got a big medicinal note. Okay. But not not now at all. I think it just even that time it opened up a little bit. Now when you say medicinal, is it, is it, is it more like a salty briny or like more of a band-aid-y medicinal? This one I'd say is more towards the salty briny for me. Okay. Definitely. Um, There's definitely, to me, vanilla in this too. Sure. Smells so like what, quite a bit of vanilla. What would you say? Um, so you're right on with the salty, briny notes, and that's something that um, I think is common to Bricklotti and also is something that if you don't like that, you'll be really put off that whiskey, right? I don't mind it at all. I think it's fine, but I know a handful of people that just <laughs> they feel like they're just eat, licking a salt block. Yeah. Know, drinking it. Well, I, I don't think it's to that. Like, when I first smelled this, I was kind of like, I mean, the only real scotch I've had in any, hardly any experience with this Ardbeg. So I was like, oh, it's got that same little tinge as like Ardbeg does where it's that, I think, like you said, that salty briny note. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I thought of. I mean, the, the peat's not there. Right. All right. So mm. I poured some of the Glen Gwen 25. I'm going to let that sit and then we'll talk about it later. You bastard. So Brad. Now. Brad brought it. Brad brought a bunch of samples um, a couple of months ago, and he put these. In, they put them in these these um, four ounce medicine bottles <laughs> that, <laughs> that, are, that are child safety locked. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really, I'm really happy that we weren't on like the, the like our channels like three way because you guys would have like everyone would have seen me struggling to open it. <laughs> Damn child locks. Um, you also mentioned, uh, having like sort of a vanilla and maybe floral thing going on in there in the, uh, classic laddie. Well, what did you say vanilla? And what was the second thing you said? Maybe a bit floral. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, I was just going to say like the, the, the finish is very, it's got a nice sweetness, I guess. Like what I would describe as like a floral sweetness. Right. Yeah. Um, to me, that's something that sticks out, uh, from the ex bourbon casks. Hmm is when a scotch has that kind of vanilla, sometimes maybe a bit coconut, maybe a bit floral, uh, that sort of thing. And I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up real quick, but I think Classic Laddie is, is ex-bourbon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're, that's, that's right. It shouldn't, I don't think it has any sherry or anything no. to it. Um, it doesn't say on the bottle here, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying no from literally all two seconds of <laughs> yeah. 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 Too, my, though, guys. My, my, i'm not the biggest fan of the classic lady I, I tell people this all the time i don't know there's something about it like i'd write like give me the choice of of the classic lady or the buna 12 i'd go buna 12 nine like 9.9 .9 times out of 10 oh mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely uh, well, the, yeah. the classic lady to me is all uh, just a, like a little bit rougher around the edges um you know just like 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 standard yeah here's what it is to me like if you if you're going to be drinking a bunch of whiskey with some folks in an evening and you've had you've had like the special bottles the new things that people just open and stuff like that and your your palate's kind of shot at that point you can break out something like classic laddie right yeah oh if yeah you're gonna be like go out and smoke some cigars or something like that and it's just you know it's it's got a, a kind of basic enough flavor profile uh, without being totally boring. So yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. It's, it's really easy to drink for yeah. sure. You know for sure. But like you said, there's not that extra le level of uh, like I guess sweetness or interestingness. I guess that the the Brook Lai had. You know. 
Right, right. And you know, they make different versions. There's a there's a Laddie eight, eight year old, and a Laddie ten. Uh, you know, there's there's different variation. Bricklotty kind of does that. They'll do, oh, this was uh, ten years old, and this was Scottish barley. This was Isla barley. This was this other maturation, right? So they'll mix up within the same branding. You know, different mm -hmm. types of releases. So those are always kind of interesting if you see them on the shelves. That's definitely the one you can find most everywhere, right? But right, uh, yeah. yeah, the bottle's very recognizable. That's why I, probably the one of the reasons I got that the sample pack. Yeah, this. This came, I know I told you guys, but this this came in a nice three sample pack here. So it included three different samples. This was about 55, 60 bucks for me for this. Right. Yeah. And these are these are only 200 ml, actually. I thought they were pints, but they're not quite that big. No. That's but about the same price as it is in, in Florida. And for a guy like me who has no experience with it, it's really cool to try different things, you know, see what I like. So Yeah, that's exactly the first time I tried any Bricklotti was that pack right there. And it's a perfect, like, intro into learning the distillery's house style. It's, mm -hmm. it's Absolutely. perfect examples of that. So. Mm. This, oh my God, I just I just drank a bit of the Glengoin 21. Chris, I need to get you some. <laughs> so good. I love that. <laughs> oh my god! I'll really never ever see that. Imagine yeah. like imagine like a, a rich uh, Christmas spice cake that's got like molasses, but also tons of like cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and stuff like that going on in there. Wow, it, that, that's, that's a rye, a rye to me. It is. Yeah. Um, it. It's not spicy like a rye. Not like it's it's like really well cooked cinnamon, I guess that mm, you know, yeah. like clove, etc. Right, like whereas rye is a little more like still peppery. Everything, mm. everything, everything in this has been just rounded beyond comprehension. Yeah, but it's still <laughs> everything's still so prominent. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you get the essence of those flavors, but not not like they're raw, right? Like, like overpowering, right? Right. Damn, that's fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, you had the, the Glen going the first time, or maybe any Glen going the first time out of this bottle, didn't you? Yes, I did. That yeah. was that was the first pour of uh, Glen going that I ever had. Yeah. And that, that's what sold it. I had maybe announced pour, and six months later, I was still talking about it. <laughs> right, I was, yeah. It's I was like, Screw it. I'm buying a bottle for my birthday. So that's that, this was my birthday bottle. And yeah, beautiful, beautiful dram. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, the color looks really dark too on that. Yeah, um, and you get that from the all, uh, all sherry maturation, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are unhurried. <laughs> yeah, they they do something. Uh, I think they their their marketing lingo for it is uh, the slowest stills in Scotland. Yeah. Interesting. Which uh, you know they means they basically the the still design runs a little bit slower and they they run them uh, not as hot as some other places right mm -hmm. so their so their distillation and their pot stills takes longer uh, which encourages a little bit more of a light and delicate character as opposed to something being more oily right okay. yeah. the twenty five is is so different. Really? Yeah. So it's got like a like a di it's got different accents. Okay. Everything's a little bit more muted. Sure. But I think the sh the sherry is a bit more prominent. Okay. Like a little more fruity or something. A bit, a bit richer. More like more 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 dark. That makes sense, yeah. Mm. Yeah, solid. Totally not jealous at all right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I I have I have two ounces left. Mm. Glorious. I'll have to get my hands on a bottle of that sometime. I'm sure it's I mean the twenty one's not cheap, but I'm sure the twenty five. How much is the, how much is the twenty one down there? Uh right in the neighborhood of two hundred, maybe a bit less. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I mean that's, I know, that's, you know, that's always going to be the case. <laughs> no, because because this will be the first bottle that I've had that I've bought in that's cheaper than avail than it is available in the states. Seriously, I wow. bought it for one hundred and seventy dollars Canadian. 
Damn. So like that would be about what I'd find it for roughly. That's about 140 American. It's just, it's a bit hard to find around here even. And so usually it's the smaller mom and pop stores that are, you know, charging higher prices generally anyway. Okay. You know, versus, versus like going to a total wine or specs. Right. But I think uh, between, between the two, I think I'd probably still take the 21. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the one people rave about. You know, it's it's sort of university universally beloved. Yeah, Roy from Aquavite talks about it all the time as well, which which also was like a big deciding factor uh, in my purchase. I was like, I had it already; it's really good. But Roy keeps on talking about it, so like, Roy talks about it, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, yeah, I, I take Roy's word for just about anything, Scotch. <laughs> Speaking that's of, really that's what I got right here. I got my nice. uh, coin number forty two. Should I get my coin? Um, we're almost coin brothers. Oh yeah, which one are you? I'm. I'm. I got fifty. I know. I was right adjacent to uh, Christina. Christina had a um. What was it? Forty. Forty four or something like that. We're like one or two apart. Maybe mm -hmm. it was. Maybe it was even forty three. When I when I text when I was texting Roy, he's like he's he's like oh I have fifty available. I'm like I got like that's mine. He's like perfect. He's like it's right in, it's right close to Brad. Christina uh -huh. and Josh and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he put us all together. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I assumed immediately that it was a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. <laughs> so I haven't confirmed that, but I assume so. so I'm going to cap that actually with a with a Roy coin. <laughs> so, um, so talk. So you um, you had the the um, both now. Uh, Chris, what do you think of the two? Like, how would you kind of rate them? Yeah, I, I honestly, I think between those two, I definitely like the Buna Haben 12 more. I think, like mm -hmm. I was saying, it has a lot more. I think it's more interesting, honestly. Like you kind of said, like once you kind of said it's like the run of the mill, like kind of just that's what a scotch tastes like type thing. I was like, yeah, I kind of could see that, you know. Yeah. Whereas the Buna Haben 12 had that that level of sweetness that i enjoy more myself at least sure and i think uh, i think the uh, boone haben 12 benefits i believe from being part sherry and part ex bourbon so mm -hmm. you get yeah. different uh at least that's that's the way it tastes to me it doesn't taste like totally sherry and it doesn't taste like completely bourbon either so uh you get a benefit of some um, added complexity and it's it's actually a solid proof too 46.3 i mean that's yeah that's well, when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't just like a 40 proof or 40%, you know? Yeah, and that can yeah. often, I mean, not always, but that can often, if it's bottled at bare minimum, uh, stuff like, you, you were saying you love the Aberlour uh, Abuna? Yes, I had a sample of that sent to me, and that, oh, I, that was a sherry bomb to me, but that was really, oh, really yeah. good. Yeah, that definitely is, and, uh, you know, if you try that versus the Aberlour 12, which is at mm -hmm. 40%, you know, Aberlour 12 is fine, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's not bad whiskey per se, but it always, like, leaves you wanting more. Yeah, it's not the same. Like you said, it's not the same. It's it's just all amplified. It's just, I, I don't know. The, I'm the, always, the, always the, leaning towards cast strength or high-proof stuff, I guess. Yeah. Here's, here's how I feel about, about the percentages. It's like, when you're, when you're, if you take away, like, the Islas, Right, all the smoky stuff. If you're just looking uh, at comparing apples to apples with uh, sherry, um, sherry or port finish stuff, right? The cast strength versions of them are always, in my opinion, are always going to be a lot better mm -hmm. um, because you're getting more sherry. And because sherry is a bit more delicate, right? Yeah. So when you start watering it down, it kind of gets lost a little bit. Like all the complexity and all the interesting things, like it's still good. But then when you have a something cast strength where it's right out of the barrel, it's like, oh damn, this is what it's this is what it's supposed to taste like. And right, that, and it can kind of turn it almost, it can kind of turn it almost like a like a cloying sweetness or something. Yeah, when it loses the uh, the punch. So yeah, especially now that you've had the red breast cast strength. If oh. you ever get if you ever get a chance to try the red breast twelve regular, yeah. You'll you're you're like oh yeah this is good but you're you're just gonna like turn away it's like that meme was like <laughs> the, girl, the girl's red breast twelve and then you're looking at the red breast twelve cast strength like ooh awesome. yeah <laughs> I, no I can already see myself doing that yeah. um with, it's, with, yeah. it's so good 
with 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 anything with anything sherry finish it like 46 is a beautiful percentage and mm -hmm. uh, but like the 40 percent sherry stuff always to me is always lacking a little bit yeah. um so yeah if, from what from what you're telling us if you if, if like what's the 21 at uh, uh 43 but yeah. I think the age does help a little bit with that at that right. point of course we because we've had the red breast 22 uh there's no, that was yeah. a Connemara 22 that we had Connemara 22 yeah yeah and we had the red breast 21 right right and those were really good so the yeah. age, the age at that point the age does 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 uh does play a factor as well in that but any of the, any of the base stuff is is just yeah, yeah it's, it's good uh just saw that um scotch test dummies scott is in so yeah scott welcome in thanks for coming um I tr i've tried a couple of good things so far buna 12 and um the classic lottie mm -hmm. i'm a i'm a fan of both but uh, yeah that that buna 12 that was a great recommendation guys yeah. i'm ready to move on to the next uh next brook lottie expression here though yeah um, so this one is the Isla barley. Now you just mentioned they use different types of barley for each of their expression, or, you know, some of their expressions they do. Right. So, so the, the previous one, the classic line was Scottish barley. Now this is Isla barley. So I don't know if you guys know anything, but difference between the two, but I'd be curious to know the yeah, difference, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the, it's just talking about the provenance of where the grain came from. Right. So uh, often, maybe not, I'm not sure on that bottle, but often on Bricklotti bottles, they will even li list the farm and which field it came from. You can do that on the website, I think. Yeah, you can look it up. Yeah. Uh, so like Isla barley means that the barley that went into the distillate that's in that bottle is uh, grown on farms on the island of Isla versus just being grown in Scotland in general. Okay. Right. All right. So it's very specific, uh, even sometimes, like I said, down to the farm and the specific field in which it was grown. So they, they, they like to do that a lot, like, you know, source their grains from different places and, and mature them separately and then and then uh, have them as different releases, which is kind of cool. You can compare exact same distillery, basically the same process, but the main difference being where the grain came from. Yeah, Brooklady, yeah. Steve A mentioned it. Brooklady has a crazy amount of detail on their website. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, this one of the, it's one of the, the, um, the distilleries that are really like, um, vocal about like the whole to terroir, um, aspect of their, of their, uh, spirits. Right. Yeah. You know, they do, they, they're huge on like, you know, all of that. Killaman is, is big uh, as well. Um, but yeah, the, the Isla Barley, I still haven't had an Isla Barley expression from Brooklady. So I can't, I don't have a lot, I can't really contribute too much here on that. But from what I remember hearing is like, it just has like, it's got a very Isla distinct distinction on it. Like a little bit more, um, not as much earth as, mm -hmm. as like a traditional um, uh, barley wood, like from the Highlands, which, which a lot of Isla um, distilleries source from, but a bit, a bit more um, of like a, a salty, um saltiness about it that's exactly what it is to me is it has like a both a more salty but a more complex salt note to it like yeah. the difference between like table salt and then like i don't know french sea salt or something there's there's like different mineral content or something in there that makes it makes it taste a little different to me no so you're absolutely right it's funny you say that because literally as i was sipping that you were describing that and it's like it, it's a completely different level of like saltiness and brininess it's yep. it's definitely a lot higher salt saltiness it seems like yep that's exactly but what always sticks out to me it's it tastes like it's higher proof too maybe that's more of the and, and again this is another unpeated expression so there's no peat in this either correct but this it, it leaves more of a burn on the tongue for me and these are both 50 percent. so oh they're equal okay they are, yeah. I'm not sure about that. Well, speaking of salt and brine, I'm going to open this. Just received today from uh, a good friend in Ireland, Terry Dolan, a, a liter bottle of Talisker Dark Storm. We, I can't wait to hear, hear what you have to say about that because also, please, Josh, yeah, do not let it sit. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're saying it gets ruined by uh, it oxidizing. It drops off a freaking cliff. You're right. 
Um, I had it. So I, I got it. I got my, my bottle in June of last year and around the September mark, beginning of September, end of August, it, it fell off. It just went, it just went bad. Sure. Yeah. So, like you gotta, you either gotta, um, um, uh, put into smaller uh, bottles or uh, drink it quick. Sure. Or use the, um, Preserve spray or whatever. Oh, you have a preserver. You know how much those preservers are in Canada? A lot. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't use it all the time, but if it's something I'm going to keep for a while or something that's extra expensive or whatever, I might use it. Uh, or um, if, you know, I get advice from somebody that's like saying uh, that it's going to go off a cliff, then I'll do that too. So uh, the Talisker Dark Storm, I've had the Storm, the regular Storm, and I didn't really care for it that much. Neither did I. Uh, but I've heard amazing things about this. So this is 45.8%. Uh, and what what separates the Dark Storm is uh, kind of sounds like what Ardbeg did with Grooves, where they did uh, some extra charred casks, like an extra high level of char. Yep, and it certainly looks like it. I mean, that's yeah, dark. It's dark. So, yeah, Christopher David said the same thing happened to him, and it, and I want I don't know if it was the extra th uh, three hundred milliliters that was in the bottle or not. Um, that that made me that led me to drink it a little bit slower, but yeah, it just it just drops off a cliff at a certain point. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't get better with Oc like in the um, in the couple of months prior to dropping off a cliff it doesn't get better it stays consistent and then right. it just goes away. So how how are you liking that Isla barley, Chris? It's good. I think I I think I lean more towards the salty brininess myself because I like that more than the classic Lottie for sure. Okay, yeah, I th I, I had a feeling that you were gonna, that uh, that was gonna be the case. Yeah, especially especially because like. Your foray into Scotch is kind of mirrors mine a little bit as well. Um, yeah. I I I, I pr much prefer the heavier, um, typical Isla influences than I do, you know, the standard, expert strictly ex bourbon unpeated stuff. Well, but but then the sherry cast too, like that Buna Twelve was really good too. So I yeah, no, the Buna was great. The Buna's great. Yeah, I but like that, that and the heat, so. Mm. Oh, that's real good. <laughs> Just to borrow a uh, borrow a Brad tasting note since he's not here. <laughs> he's busy. He Brad is busy parenting for anyone wondering. Uh, but yeah, the dark storm. So you didn't like the, the storm. I didn't either. But I yeah. love I love the t I love the ten. I'm not a big fan of the storm, but the dark storm. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I remember seeing that. It's the same thing in each one, like the same spirit. Yeah, no, it's no, just, no. It's just different levels of char. The dark storm, though, is like it's like the two the two bookends and like the uninteresting middle middle child. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's the it's the boring middle child. <laughs> um, yeah, this is definitely. I mean, you can tell it's it's absolutely Talisker. Uh, it's got that salty, briny. Um, Tal Talisker also to me also has not only that kind of sea air maritime character, but also has a little bit of a slight anise flavor or, or mm. scent to it. Uh, not, not so much like going into licorice or something, but it had that's that slight spice to it. That's a little anise. -y. I can agree from memory. And that's the other one that Vito recommended to me was Talisker 10. He said that that or Buna Hobbit 12 were his two recommendations to me. Mm -hmm. Alistair 10 is a solid, solid uh, uh, bottle if you're, especially if you're first getting into scotch and you want to try a um, an island distillery that's n that is peated but isn't in the level of Ardbeg, Lafroy, Lagavulin. It's a different peat. Yeah, it's a very much different peat. When you're talking all the island uh, distilleries, um, you can't. It's hard to compare. You can see the progression when you kind of go through it and then end up in Isla. You can see where it's going, but it's like. It's it's its own beast, and it's 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 it's, it's, it's it is a special area as well. But mm. yeah, you Mark, can it's, it's, like, like, it's got that barrel char smoke to it too, right? Like not, you can tell that it's peated, but not heavily. Yeah, the other smoke note that's in there is, is more of a wood smoke, more of a barrel char. Mm. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. 
Yeah. What are you, what are you going on to next? Um. So I guess next in line here in the in the sampler pack is the Port Charlotte. Yes. Yes, oh. and this is Port Charlotte Scottish barley. Now this is heavily peated, so we're going complete other end of the spectrum here with this. I wonder right. if I can just get get my MCO one. You do, you do, Vito. Think think about the day you had today. You do, you do. <laughs> I can I, I can have a distillery like hug with you. <laughs> <laughs> distillery hug. Distillery hug. <laughs> but man, man, I I. I I need to get you some of the 21 because God damn it, it's so good. I would love to, I'd love to try that from what you guys are saying. My goodness. It is lovely. Um, I bet you feel like the shit, like the, the sherry stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I need a glass, right? Glendronic is another great, great way to go in that direction. I, so uh, Glendronic. Yes. I was unimpressed with the 12 though. Yeah, you really need to get into the 15, 18, and up. Older Even ones. Super old ones uh, with uh, Rob, right? Whiskey in the uh, Second? Yes. Yeah, it was the um, – oh, geez, which one was it? Grandier. Uh, yes, it was, it was the, it was the Glen, Glen uh, Drona Grandier. And, yeah, that was, uh, that was damn good. Hmm. All right. Well, initially, I'm going to go ahead and say this is not not the type of peat I was expecting. I think Ardbeg's peat blows it away compared to what compared to this, in my opinion. In terms of what though? Just just peatiness, like like the amount of smoke I'm getting just right off the glass okay. to begin with. Okay. Okay. I can just on the nose. Just on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um... As you try more peated scotches that are peated to various levels and come from different areas, you might start to notice a different smoke character. Mm -hmm. Even this is definitely a different peat than what Ardbeg is. I'll say that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. But as far as um, I mean, distinguishing the two, like specifically what they are, Ardbeg, I always describe more as of a um, more like a campfire note versus like a cigar, a cigarette ash or something. Sure. So on the part Port Charlotte. Uh, the one that you have. Mm -hmm. Well, even even still, so Port Charlotte. So there's a bunch of there's a couple different ones. Um, yeah. You have the 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 uh, the regular Port Charlotte, the Port Charlotte Ten, um, the MCO one. There's another MC. I think it's the MRC. Yeah, right. There's an MRC R01. I think that's the one I've had. That was like. Italian wine cast? No, the MCO one was the was the Italian wine cast. The uh, Marsala, okay. Marsala wine cast, which is what I have right now, which is what uh, me and Jason um, shared a dram of last week. But with Port Charlotte, I always get an amazingly um, like a southern barbecue brisketness hmm. um, from the nose. Brisketness. Brisketness. <laughs> What do you know about brisketness? <laughs> yeah, and man, I I can still taste that barbecue that you brought me to. Uh, yeah, Terry Black's. Oh my god. Uh huh. That's yeah, when we uh, when we picked up Terry, uh, not Terry, we picked up uh, Ray and Vito at the airport here in Austin uh, late last year. We took him directly to barbecue <laughs> right away. It was just airport straight to Terry Black's. Yep, got to do it. Yep. Um, do, you, do, you, do you pick up that like sort of porky meatiness? Yeah, uh, no, I, I'm with you, and, and I'm, I'm I tried one pour out of the Ugadale, and I got that same thing where it was more of a meaty, yeah, heat versus uh versus like the the ten did not have that same like bacony pork, you know, smoked pork note that 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 had. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh. I saw uh, John in the, the chat talking about uh, he brought a bottle of Port Charlotte out for happy hour on Monday and thinks our friend from Whiskey and Barbecue uh, that's referred to as Chaos <laughs> may have drank half the bottle of it. Um, of course, on Monday, what it was was a uh, going away farewell for Jesse from Stillet that was uh, in town who was just such an awesome, cool dude. It's loads of fun to hang out with. Uh, I just put out a video with him today. Uh, of tasting his homemade stuff, and he's going to have one uh, whenever he gets around to, to putting it up of uh, a Texas whiskey flight that I gave him. Um, 
So just a cool, cool dude. And I'm wearing the shirt today. Yep. Can't really see it from the camera, but chase the craft. Craft. So Eric said, um, oh, no, it, it just disappeared on me. Um, um, I think in terms of Northern Islay and Southern Islay, so like Brook Lottie, Buna Haben for Northern, and then Ardbeg Lafroy. Le- Lagavulin for Southern. He said the Northern has a heavier peat note. No, no, he he he, he meant Southern. Right? The South is generally he yeah. corrected himself. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. and, I, and I was thinking, I was like, is this my opportunity to school Eric? <laughs> I was like, oh my god. I'm like, I'm like, this is the moment. But he 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 retracted it. He corrected himself. Yeah. Good on you, yeah. Eric. You you. If if I had to correct you on that, we everybody would have had to be. Uh, in trouble with that because I don't trust <laughs> anybody on anything. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, but but when you say that though, that makes perfect sense to me because it's a different type of peat and it's it seems like it's mellowed. That that is how it seems. It's like a mellow peat to me compared to like the art bag. The other thing, if you get a chance to try it, what I think is super interesting, Balvenie Peat Week mm. is really really good and has an entirely different peat character to it. It's very it's heavily. Really? Repeated. You you can absolutely tell, but you yeah. compare that to something like you know from Isla, like an Ardbeg, and it's it's a completely different whiskey, uh, but still amazing in its own right. Um, so many people have recommended that too. Like I've heard a lot of people recommend that one. So I've never seen that bottle though. Not it's hard, here. hard to find. If anything, yeah. if anything, what I would suge- what I would suggest if you want to if you want to um, sort of see what the different kinds of peat are, find yourself a bottle of Glenthitic Fire and Cane. Yeah, mm. that's, that's a nice one too. But this one right here, that's what you want. Nice. <laughs> it's fabulous. Yeah, if you can find it, get that one. But if if you can't find it and you want to you want to experience like more of that earthier uh that earthier peat, that's very much that's very different from the medicinal peat that that's mm-hmm. prominent in Isla. I I think Glenfiddich Fire and Cane, not only is it a, just a great whiskey, it's a great intro whiskey to uh scotch. It absolutely uh, is right, especially peated scotch because it's slightly peated from from. You can move from Fire and Cane to Talisker, uh, or any of the I- islands into Isla would be like the probably the best way of kind of guiding someone that's sensitive and um, that's sensitive to smoke and peat into it. Yeah, if, it, if a Lafroy or Ardbeg is too much, that's a great one to dial it down by half or more. Yeah, yeah. So I just poured something new here, um, and I thought this would be interesting for you, seeing as you're just now getting into scotch. This is kind of a cool thing that's a tradition in scotch whiskey, and it's independent bottling. I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with this at all, but this we is an a little bit off camera, but yeah. Uh, so this is a Gordon McPhail cast strength bottling of Lejeg, uh, from which is a brand from the Tobermory distillery, which is on the Isle of Mull. So it's, again, an island whiskey, not a not a mainland Scotland whiskey. Uh, so it does have a lot of similar kind of characteristics to uh, the, the famous Isla stuff. It is peated mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it's just a little different character to it. And I think uh, Lejeg generally to me is, is awesome, awesome stuff. So this is this is 14 years old and uh, cast strength at 54.5. Wow. And it was uh, a, a single cask, a refill sherry hogshead, so. Nice, That's see, yeah. that sounds really good. I mean, that sounds really good. Yeah. Sherry, cast strength, 14 years, I mean. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it can be a little intimidating to look, go into a store that has a bunch of independent bottlings and you're looking at all of these brands and you might see names that you're familiar with, right? Uh, but you don't know exactly what you're getting because it's not like the typical distillery release bottle you're, right. you're buying essentially. It's kind of the equivalent of a single barrel pick in in bourbon. In bourbon. Yeah. Still but, that. but that is why you have friends to just message and ask, hey, should I get this bottle of scotch or not? Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's it's, right. It's, 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 it's a blessing and a curse to have friends like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Found out. we yeah. were talking about that the other day chris we were just like we we're just like I, I think i was the one that said i was like i was like this is the most dangerous vice to have mm-hmm. it is it just it just you like something and you just keep on going and it spirals out of control yeah you're just like oh dude you haven't had that it's amazing you gotta try it i know 
And the sad part is it's already happening with Scotch now. Like talking to you guys, especially the last like week, it's been like I'll send you pictures at the store and I'm like, oh, I better get this too. I better get this too because they said this is good. It's like when you sent me the picture, when you sent me the picture of the Ugudal, the Brookladi thing, I was like, oh my God, he's corrupted. He's one of us. <laughs> we got him, guys. We, we, got haven't, him. we haven't even had the stream. He's already on board. Oh. <laughs> I know. I hate to say it. It's bourbon will always be, I mean, bourbon will always be my, my foundation, you know? Yeah. That's but right. this, I mean, the scotch is completely different, but man, like I can see how the first, the first time I tried our bag, I was, I was like, ah, you know, it's not, not that great. But then the second dram I had was like, wow, mm -hmm. my tongue acclimated to this now. And it's, it's good. You yeah. know, yeah. Once, once you kind of, if you, if and that's the thing is like, if you've ever had it before and you didn't like it, and then you start drinking other whiskeys and you sort of build yourself back up, it's like, okay, I can handle the, the the alcohol I can handle the like the the you know the flavors and I just got to get into that 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 smokiness and mm -hmm. once you die it's like all right that's it it's like you're I'll right you're absolutely right you know what's funny though too is that the vast major majority of scotch is not peated yeah but right. but scotch is known for being smoky like when the world thinks about what is scotch people yep. think smoke generally yeah. that was that was my whole thing when i first started to get into scotch like when, when i first started getting into whiskey i was like i was being given stuff that had smoke and this and that i was like what is this and i was, <laughs> and, I was and i was younger so i was i was like just getting it in like in this little like glass like an mm -hmm. italian shot glass and i was just shooting it everyone around me is like dr sipping it and i'm just like what the fuck are you guys doing <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my mind i was like oh god i can't handle this i can't handle this <laughs> um but i just want to go back a little bit jeffrey patron said quick veto should i buy all the scotch yes jeffrey you should buy all the scotch and share it with us yeah right yeah. well and i gotta i gotta you know um i jeffrey patron was in austin recently and i was in dallas most of the time that he was in austin for work and i came back absolutely exhausted from all that and so I, I missed him. I, 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 I texted him the next day and <laughs> I was like, Hey man, are you still around in town? He's like, no, I'm in Kentucky now. Oh, next time. He drove. Yeah. He, he did a road trip deal. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see him next time he's in town. So nice. Yeah, this is good. I think, um, before the stream, Josh and Vito told me the order I should drink these in and so far, it's been good. I mean, I agree. The classic Lottie was the, like the base, like that's the foundation of Brucolati. I feel like. Yeah. We move in, you know, we move up a little bit to the Isle Barley, which is a little bit different, a little more of that salt. Mm -hmm. And then now the the peated. I mean, now we're starting to get to, what I what I like so far. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I like to just jump around. So often, if I'm just sampling whiskeys by myself. Uh, or, or even with friends here, you know, we'll just jump around to whatever like pops into our heads, you know, peated, unpeated, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to try and like purposefully go through a tasting and see a progression, uh, I think that's the way to do it. I no, tend, absolutely. I tend to, whenever I'm around a bunch of whiskey, I just um, instinctively create like the, 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 um, the course for myself. I was like, I see what's available. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make a course for myself and end with 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 peated with anything peated. Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely do I find myself uh, just kind of willy nilly sort of picking from um, from stuff like that. I'll, I'll I'll instinctively just sort of like map myself a course and try to if I can avoid it, I try to avoid going with the stronger stuff first so that I can kind of like just taste yeah. stuff that I haven't tasted before. Well, Scott, well yeah. Scott from Scotch Test Dummy says that you uh, uh, instinctively go for the White Walker. I need to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like there's a, there's a couple of people still waiting for my cocktail episode of that. Yeah, uh, it's so bad. It's so bad. I have it filmed. I I have to I have to sit down. I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning. I promise. I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning. Maybe I can get it out for Sunday. Um, you know. <laughs> But like, oh man! Like, I regret buying two bottles of that so much. I bought a bottle. Game of Thrones. I, that's fun. I no, bought. Thank God I haven't tried I that one yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with mine. I keep, I keep like wanting to just throw it away because it's, it's not good at all, and I don't really ever make cocktails at home. 
So Just right put now, wait for people to come over. Okay, so right now it's at the at, right there. So that's empty up here, right? So before the cocktail episode, it was up here. Oh my gosh. So I just I just went I I was doing heavy pours for the episode. I was doing I think two ounce pours. Just well, trying like, to put it out of its misery. I just to empty this bottle out. I was just like <laughs> I just, like I need to just empty it out. So there's still like I don't know just over a, just under a half bottle of it left and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I have an I was gifted another bottle that I have in the freezer that I'll probably never <laughs> it'll never see the light of day. <laughs> I'm, I'm just i'm just so disappointed because like come on like Eric, friends don't let friends drink white walker seriously no friends fr fr friends that don't drink whiskey give their friends that do drink whiskey white walker so yeah yeah scott I, I did i did get two bottles of it and not only that i went to go get two bottles of it we went to total wine uh the day they were supposed to have it in and it was me and my wife gretchen and we walked in there together and grabbed a couple of bottles off the shelf and got stopped by an employee because they were saying that it was, oh, this is allocated. It's one per person, which is nonsense for that whiskey. Yeah. It, it wasn't even in limited supply, right? Like really, but this was just like the first day they got it in and this dude thought he was going to, you know, shut me down. And I was like, well, okay, one for me, one for her. What's the big deal? He's like, well, you guys like came in together. I'm like, so what? She wants one. I want one. What's the big deal? It's like, oh, no, 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 no. It's one one per family or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> we can't have that out of here, man. We don't want that. Yeah. It's a shame because all the other Game of Thrones edition, like the Agile stuff I've tried, have been really good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially the Klein Leash was great. Yeah. Like, like uh, it's just like, it's like, okay, Johnny Walker's like their whatever line like it's just like for all their base stuff with Johnny walker like the red now the white um are like okay they are what they are but like come on like you had you were you were, you were so solid solid and all the other all the other things why why drop the ball on this yeah and like so yeah not only do i have like two almost full bottles of it it's ones that I had to like argue and fight with people to get my hands on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so disappointed. It was awful. Yeah. Um, Richie's welcome in. Thanks for coming in. Richie still made it. He's here in every. Yeah. Every this, is gonna be, this, this is going to be, this is going to be a marathon stream right here. Heck yeah. We're, I know we're way past 10. I didn't even think of take a second thought about it. We still got whiskey to go. We still got whiskey. We're going to keep on going. If people want to want to stick around. Yay, yeah. People, you're our people. Yeah. If you guys need to leave, we get it. You know, it's it's getting late for some people. Yeah. So, of course, that's what these live streams really are all about, man. It's just kind of hang out, chit chat, talk yeah. with you, and people come and go. It's it's uh, yeah, all good. Well, after our last uh, last last live stream with Vito, I mean, I jumped in with uh, with Vito and Josh, and we just talked for a couple hours after. It was so it was just literally just like this. We were just talking about whiskey and. Yeah, isn't that the like beautiful thing? I've found that over and over and over again in the whiskey community is like somebody you've never even met in person or somebody you've just literally talked to for the first time, you start talking about whiskey and it just it just goes and it just works. Like, yeah, it's just it's just so easy for yeah. sure. I mean, this is this is how our channel started. Yeah, literally. Like we me, Brad and Josh and a couple other people were, were just like talking every week with whiskey and then we we're just like, well, let's Let's just do this on on camera, and then it was right. me, Josh, and Brad that were kind of like, okay, we're like, we're we'll do like we're gonna do it because you know we're more com like, you know, we wanted to do it, so we did it, and that's that's how that's how we started. Right, so it, it's really natural for us to just kind of just be talking to each other. The learning curve was following with chat. It's like it's it's so much more like crazy nonsense like difficulties you didn't even anticipate right you're like oh this is easy i'll buy a webcam and a microphone and yeah, i can all right <laughs> oh. and there's always there's always issues like my first stream went perfect i had no no audio no camera issues at all every stream sensed like i've had something go wrong like my yeah. audio cut out See, now, 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 now that you've said that something's gonna happen I know we've been good so far. I shouldn't have said that. You know, it's funny because like we started the opposite. We had we we had months of technical issues. Well, that's what Eric and everyone has. And we finally have it under. It seems like we have it under control now. So 
Yeah, yeah. But you never know, like sometimes you're doing something stupid on your end and sometimes yeah. it's just YouTube and you know, that's how it Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like it's 50-50. Yeah. I had a uh, question from, um, from Dan. He said, uh, he, he feels like I'd really like the Nika whiskey from the barrel. Have you guys ever had that before? Yes. I have. I have a bottle sitting behind me here. Uh, and yeah. how is it? Because that's that's one another one's been recommended to me a whole bunch. I am not generally a big fan of Japanese whiskey. Uh, years and years ago when you could find it for like 50 bucks, I used to buy Yamazaki 12 once in a while because I, I didn't even really know anything about whiskey, but I just knew that was one that I'd tried and I liked. Um, but for me, almost universally, a Japanese whiskey right now today is overpriced for what it delivers. One hundred, yeah. And, and it's it's just because of scarcity. Uh, that's not to say that there's some glorious ones out there, and Nika from the Barrel is one of those. Yeah, that's like so one of those that's that. worth it. I, you know, I, I don't really, I'm really anti kind of secondary market stuff. You know, I can, I can sort of understand auction of old rare things, but you know, sure. the, the, I'm, I'm referring to the places that like sell Blantons for hundred and twenty dollars or something, yeah. right? You know, that that stuff's crazy, and, and I don't, I don't right. get, I don't get with that. So Nika from the Barrel isn't something I would pay over MSRP for, but you find it in a store. Like I did, I you know, walked in and that was, I forget, like $70 or something. And it's cast strength, you know, lightly peated Japanese whiskey. And it's fantastic. Really? And that, yeah. that was my draw too. It was exactly what you just said. Like the, the cast strength, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I, I, I've never seen a bottle anyway. So I'm, it's, go, I'm going to Japan in 10 days. I'll be really curious to see when you go there, like, is Japanese whiskey that's of, you know, desirable quality um, easier or harder to find? I'm going to, well, I'll be looking. I'm going to six different cities. So six, seven, eight. Eight different cities. Right. So I'll be I'll be on the lookout. You'll be, you'll be getting messages from me all the time. Like, look what I, look what I found. Me <laughs> be getting like jealousy inducing pictures constantly. Well, I, I want to try and escape to go to the um, uh, the Yamazaki Distillery. Yeah, I mean that would be super cool if I was if I was had the chance. I'd love to go and see. It, it's, only, it's only like forty five minute forty five minute train ride outside of uh, Kyoto. So I'm hoping to go there. I know that the, all the tours are are booked up, but I'm I kind of just want to go anyways, just to go to the the tasting room and kind of just walk around the grounds. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna be on the lookout for a lot of different things. I'm going with three other people that don't drink whiskey, so I'm really hoping that they don't want to bring any other alcohols back home with them, so that we can bring them into Canada. <laughs> um, but the Nick from the Barrel is typically a 500, no, a 350 bottle, right? Uh yeah, the, it's a smaller size. The ones they're oh, selling in the U.S. now are, are regular seven fifty. Yeah, uh, Tokyo counts as two. Yeah, Tokyo does count as two cities. It's freaking huge. We're we're spending uh the beginning of the trip in Tokyo four days there, and the last three days there, and and we're Kyoto, Osaka, Hiroshima, uh, Nara, uh, Hakone, uh, and I think we're going to Fuji. Or I'm going to Kobe because I want to. I want to go to Kobe to have Kobe beef, like proper. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it should be a fun trip. So the question is, though, like, there's a lot of you know overseas only releases of stuff. Do you have like one bottle specifically you're looking for? Yeah, you can only fit that travel retail, man. Yeah. If if all else fails, I think I may get. I think I may get the Lafroy PX if I can find it. Mm. Um, only because Lafroig is my jam. Yeah. Uh, and PX is also my jam. I really, <laughs> I really, I really like jam. I found lately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just jamming out over there, man. Jamming it out. But yeah, I, I think if all else fails, if I can't find anything, uh, priced right, um, it'll be definitely that. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. I just so noticed. I Wait, wait, what do you got? What are you pouring? Yeah, I moved on to Arbeg 10. Okay. 
So just regular R bag 10. We're, we're moving up. We're yeah. moving up. Yeah, but yeah. this now this bottle is maybe two third or one third of the way down. And it's much sweeter than the last time I had it. Sure. I always get sort of um, like pears, like a crisp fruit. Yep. And Which I definitely did not get in the shoulder. Like when I reviewed the bottle. I always I that at all. I always get this weird um, like green bell pepper in there too. You yeah, you mentioned that before. Uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of people don't uh, don't it doesn't come off that way to them, but uh, I, that always reminds me of it. Um, I just noticed uh, got a, my friend Spencer Whelan is in the chat. He just jumped in. Uh, so Spencer is the uh, CEO of the Texas Whiskey Association, the head of the Texas Whiskey Association. So awesome! Hi, Spencer. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Texas Whiskey Trail as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make a trip down to Texas now that I have an excuse to. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, and you—I know you can show me the ropes everywhere. Good to go. I didn't even know they had a Texas trail. There you. I mean, like there you go. Yeah, yeah. There, it's uh, it's actually just about to launch. There's a in a few weeks here. There's a Texas whiskey festival, and mm. and uh, so that's going to be you know all Texas distilleries showcasing in their own yeah. events, right? Uh, the trail officially launch, launches on that day. Uh, okay. So right now they're pre-selling memberships. Uh, they're calling them trailblazer memberships for a reduced price. So the price are going to go up after the festival, uh, the official launch and stuff. So right. you get uh, actually, hey, it's right here. I got a, I got the uh, glass. I don't know if you see that, but the certified Texas whiskey. You get one of those and like a T-shirt and a membership card and you know, free tours at distilleries and things like that. So lots of cool. Awesome. Are, um, Chris, are you good? Because I know you're part part of the Whiskey Tribe. Are you going to try and get out to Austin? Uh, sorry, because I missed a bunch of, of what you guys were just talking about. But are you going to try and get out to Austin in October? I don't think I'll be able to in October. I may have to wait till the, the following year. Oh, for the Crowded Barrel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Party? Yeah, yeah. I know there's so many people... I mean, planning on it, it's probably going to be nuts this year. I mean, last year I'm sure it was busy too, but this year's probably going to be just crazy. Well, yeah, and the thing about Wizard Academy is they can only really accommodate so many people on site. Right. So, you know, like it, I imagine it'll be about the same number of people. Last time it was all Patreon members, I think, or like yeah, ninety five yeah. percent of them were Patreon members. Uh, but yeah, it was an absolute blast. I plan to pace myself better this time because I spent like four <laughs> days. I spent like four days entertaining people and picking people up from the airport and staying out late and all this yep. stuff. Just, you know, we were meeting all these people for the first time and having a blast. And by the time Saturday actually rolled around, uh, I was absolutely exhausted. <laughs> yeah. So, the, the <laughs> Remember I spent most of the, I spent most of the day laying on the floor in, in the, uh, Engelbrecht house. <laughs> Just not so just, just, it was like cold tile down there. <laughs> it felt glorious. Not only was I exhausted and like hung over and stuff, it was like a hundred something degrees outside as well. Just and for people who don't know, you are you're actually very involved with the whole uh, whiskey tribe, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I just I go down there pretty frequently because it's not that far from the house, and you know they have happy hours down there at the Fang and Feather and uh, Crowded Barrel Distillery, and mm -hmm. yeah, just. Uh, been going there for quite a while and got to know everybody that's involved down there. And, and that's actually where I met Spencer was at the, uh, for the first time was at the uh, crowded barrel launch party. He kind of, I was again, just, just in rough shape and like pouring sweat outside. And <laughs> this, this guy walks up to me and he's like, Hey, you're Josh, right? And I'm like, man, I, I think so <laughs> <laughs> right now. And that was Spencer. So, yeah, no, I would love to make a trip down. Um, I'll have to plan. The, I mean, I've got now, now that I've got the channel going a little bit, it's like I got plans. I want to go back to Kentucky again and do some stuff. I want to, I mean, yeah, I want to make it to Texas now. Train? I want to explore Texas so much. That's, that's, the, that's the, the, the big challenge, young family. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's the thing, you know. Sure. It's not like being single and being able to just go do whatever you want, you know? So, but Hey, yeah. I, mean, I can make a vacation out of it though. Yeah. You know, absolutely. So you, so you I, have you gone to do the bourbon trail thing? Yeah, I did some, I mean, last time I've only been to Kentucky once and we stayed downtown Louisville. So we hit the whole, you know, all the downtown Louisville distilleries. Um, 
Old Forester, Evan Williams. Angels Envy over there. Yeah, yeah. Angels Envy, we did uh, Jim Beam to Stillhouse. We did all those. Um, went to Buffalo Trace, Woodford Reserve, and Jefferson's were the three we hit outside of Louisville. Mm-hmm. Those were all really nice. But, I mean, everyone talks such good things about Four Roses and Wild Turkey. You know, Jim Beam, the main Jim Beam campus, obviously. So right. I definitely want to make another trip out there. And there's a lot of a lot of people in the whiskey community too are based in Kentucky, yeah. obviously with my bourbon influence. So yeah, it'd be like cool to there, uh, and see people and stuff from there too. So next next if you ever find yourself in Louisville again, you should reach out to uh, the Weddle. The full Weddle. <laughs> he is a uh, he is a blast. He's a good dude. Uh, except for uh, when he when he came to Austin last time, uh, he came and stayed at the house for a night before um, going to psalm class at, at Wizard Academy, and he brought two gifts. <laughs> one one was this bottle of sixteen year old Ben Riek, which was fantastic, right? And the other was a bottle of Canadian Mist. <laughs> <laughs> well, Canadian Mist, <laughs> my guy. Thank you. So, what do you pour uh, there, Josh? I have the Ardbeg Cory Vrecken because I, mm-hmm. I, I was just gonna say, let's get the Ardbegs out. Yeah. Yep. So you have the uh, Ugadal coming up, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the next one in about. Sure. Um, the the Cory Vrecken to me, uh, it may it may be cast strength or close to it. It's fifty seven point one percent. I think that's what the Ugadol is. Fifty, no, so fifty-four. I'm, I'm. Both of them are are supposedly just slightly watered down. Right. Like they might as well be cast strength. Yeah, fifty-four point two is the Ugi. It says. Yeah. So where to me, the where where um, Corey, uh, where Ugadol rather, sorry. Not Corey Brecken. Ugadol is the sherry influenced, still heavily peated, but you get that kind of fruity sweetness, and mm-hmm. uh, and with the Ardbeg character, Corey Brecken is is out of the core range, the most heavily peated, or comes across really? as being the most heavily peated in any way. It's it's closest to me to the. Uh, flavor of an Octomore without really without really being quite the same, but it's kind of like in that approaching that territory. So, is there okay. anything special with the Corey of Reckon that's um, like like the Ugadale is sherry cast? Anything with like that with the uh, Corey of Reckon? I don't, you know, I don't know that much about the actual sort of recipe, if you will. It's 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 just really peaty, very kind of spicy, peppery. Um, they don't really go into too much detail on the labeling. I'm sure I could probably find it somewhere, but I don't know. It doesn't smell like it has much sherry or anything. No. To it. There may be some, but with any of these, they're making they're making a blend, right? Within the same distillery. Right, right. Yeah. So now when I when I broke this bottle of the uh, Ugadale open the other night, it was I mean the peat is so much more tame compared to the Ardbeg ten. I mean, it's just, it seems like it's tamed at least. Maybe that's the sherry covering it up, but. Yeah, no, it's definitely balanced by the sherry content in there, I think. And and to me, it makes it like almost like a cherry wood smoked bacon kind of vibe to it. Yes, that's exactly what I was describing. It was like a, that bacon or like smoked pork is kind of how I described it. No, you know. Yep. Where the Cory is a little more peppery, briny, uh, and it doesn't really have as much of that sweetness to it. Um, although it, you know, all, all scotch to a degree is sweet, right? right. In, in one way or another, but right. uh, it's not as sweet as the Yugadol. Right. It's like different levels of sweetness almost. Yeah. And a different character to that sweetness. Is it, is it, is it like a vanilla frosting icing sugar sweetness or is it more of a fruity <laughs> sherry sweetness? Right. Exactly. Boy, that smells good, though. Oh, yeah. You've let it. You've, you've opened it up. You've let it air a little bit. Damn good, man. Damn, damn good. Uh, pour here. I'm a little jealous now because I, I do have a bottle of Ugadol up there. But when the Ardbeg bus, have you seen this? The Ardbeg bus thing. I've seen the bus. I've never seen it in life, but it, you know, online. Yeah, they came through Austin a while ago, and and we went and did the did the thing. It was fun, and they. 
if you bought a bottle of Ardbeg anything there at the store where, where they were hosting the bus, they would engrave it for you in their engraving machine. Yeah, that's while, awesome. while, you, while you were doing the, the bus experience, um, the escape room. And, so is that uh, what it was? Like, I guess that's a good question. So is it like an escape room, Ardbeg escape room? Yeah, like it's a double decker bus kind of thing. So you get in the first level and they give you clues. It, it, like there's there's things in the room, like drawers and books and things like that. And they, they play a little video saying, oh, Ardbeg has this character and, you know, it's it's water comes from uh, Loch Ugadal. That's where the, the word Ugadal comes from is the water source. Oh, gotcha. Um, and they'll say, well, find in the room, you know, this thing. I don't remember what it was, but you got to find the right elements to like unlock, you know, part of your escape from the room. And once you find the, the three things in the room and you solve the puzzle, then you go upstairs and they talk to you about the different art bag expressions and, you know, right. just hang out. That's pretty cool though. So I, I have a uh, I have the engraved bottle here, but I want to save it. I want to save it. It's it's going to be a gift for somebody because it says on the side the cult of Ardbeg is what I had <laughs> what I had engraved into it. So I did a quick uh, quick look up, and uh, Ard Ardbeg typically is pretty pretty secretive with a lot of their stuff. Right. Uh, they're not they're not super super transparent. They did give just enough away to kind of like entice you. But there's nothing anywhere listing any cask selections. Yeah, there's no like there. recipe per se. Cor so right. so it's probably just near barrel proof then. Near barrel, yeah. proof. definitely ex bourbon. Yeah, um, it definitely tastes ex ex bourbon predominant to me for sure. For well, sure, maybe like a like a little bit of, of its um, at least some sherry, I'd say. Yeah, there definitely could be an element of that in there. Very slightly, and obviously not to the degree of the Udal, but right. Some... Yeah, this is just fantastic, man. This is my yeah. favorite uh, out of out of the out of the core range of the Ardbegs. I missed it. Which one do you have, Vito? The Udal. Udal, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our friend, um, our friend here in Austin, uh, Matthew Wright. <laughs> I'm always amused by his. Uh, he, he judges any other whiskey, like it doesn't matter. It could be bourbon, Irish whiskey, scotch, doesn't matter. He judges it against Ugadol. That's like, yeah. his, that's his gold <laughs> standard, like yeah. against which, uh, against which all other whiskeys should be judged. And so when you're, he's looking at buying a bottle, especially an expensive one, right? Like say a bottle's uh, $200 and he's like, well, is that really like two and a quarter Ugadol is good or... <laughs> <laughs> I've actually kind of adopted this. I've adopted it uh, like just in against my will. It's just, he, he said it so many times when, when we first started talking, it's like, now when I think it's like, would, would I, like, would I spend, you know, $200 or would I rather sp buy two of dolls? It's like, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm, two of dolls sounds pretty good right about now. <laughs> no, I, I get that though. Cause this is like, I mean, now I'm thinking like this compared to the Buddha Hobbit 12 and like the, the, the same, I feel like it's the same foundation if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. But the peat just adds another level of like, like interestingness again. I, like it's just a whole nother, like it's very unique because of that extra peat level. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. It adds an extra layer of complexity and depth and like kind of richness to it. And of course the higher proof. Definitely helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is so good though. Now you just bought you you bought a ten not too long ago. And now you bought the Ugadol. Yep. Um. Yep. Which one would you buy again? Uh, the Ugadol easily. <laughs> not uh, easily. I mean, that, it was. That's uh, that's what the same thing happened to me. I bought I bought both very close to one another. And I finished the 10 fairly quickly and I just have the Ugadol just steadily, you know, dripping down. I was like, I need to savor yep. this damn good. Well, and the, and the 10 was like about 50 bucks for me. And I think the Ugadol was around 80. That sounds about right. Yeah. But, but I mean, the difference, I mean, the difference in proof and then just the flavor profile, I prefer myself. Yeah. Yeah. The 10, again, like, it's kind of like that classic Laddie, not that they taste the same, but right. where, 
the tin is great. It's a, it's yeah. a solid right. staple whiskey. And like, if I'm just going to go, in fact, my friend Jared, um, here in town, he's got a, a really great whiskey collection. He's a giant Ardbeg fan. He's got like, I don't know how many, 20 different Ardbegs. <laughs> you know, they're like kind of the kings of special limited releases and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they, that's really their thing. So he's got all these Ardbegs and we'll, you know, I'll go over to his house and we'll try all sorts of different things. And then when it's come time to just go and hang out and smoke a cigar on the patio, Ardbeg 10 comes with. Yeah. Because you're not drinking the super limited, you know, extra special right. stuff at that point. Right. No, I completely get that. I saw Eric in the chat said he prefers the Corey of Reckon to the to the Ugadel. He's wrong. <laughs> I think Brad <laughs> does too. I think Brad is more of yeah, a Corey Brad, of Reckon. Brad, Brad likes the Corey of Reckon as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, I mean, now that makes me want to get that too, to compare I mean, the two. You can't go wrong. This is the problem. This is the problem. <laughs> and that's why there's a that's what that's why there's the cult of Ardbeg because everything is so freaking good. It is it really is? And you know what? I was actually at the store today and I saw Lafroy quarter cask and Vito and I were talking about this a while back. How that's what started him into Scotch, really. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I, I man, I want to get this. I want to get this to see how it compares to the Ardbeg. You know? Yeah. The, the very, quarter cask is to me like out of the readily available Lafroigs. Three woods good, but I just I like quarter cask. Quarter cask stands head head and shoulders above anything Lafroy I've I've had to date. Aside from the Cargis stuff. Um. Okay. So I've only had I have I haven't opened up my sample of the Fino, the Cargis Fino. Oh God! Oh, that one's so good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> uh, but I've had the cast strength quarter cask Cargis, which was very good. But I sort of. I sort of preferred the 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 normal release a little bit better. I feel mm -hmm. like the water did something a little bit more to it than the um, than uh, having a cast strength. It was still freaking amazing, but um, yeah, the normal bottling is uh, just a touch better for for my palate. Um, but yeah, the, the, but the lore is always um, all the lore. I always I any opportunity I can I can't I can get to bash lore. <laughs> I will. I don't really hate it so much. No, but, but I'm not no, like I don't, I don't think it. it's. I don't think it's like it, it lives up to its price point and at, at two hundred dollars Canadian. Holy crap! Ooh, we. I, can, <laughs> I, can buy, I can buy two two Uga dolls. Yeah, right. There you go again. Com comparing it to Uga doll. Yep. I can buy an Uga doll, or I can buy the Glengoyne Twenty One again. Like, I, like, there's no, there's no, I'd rather have a Glen Glen 21 than a, a, Laf a Lafroy Glore. I saw uh, Christopher David in the chat said, uh, Dark Cove is better than the lore. It absolutely is better than lore. Yeah, Dark Cove <laughs> is freaking, what a, what a glass that is. Glorious. Amazing. And I had the, the opportunity to smell the, the, um, the uh, committee release, not even taste, just smell the committee release. Of the of the dark hove, my god, man! <laughs> I'd I'd give I'd give uh, I'd give my left testy up for the dark hove committee release. <laughs> wow! I'd go I'd go full Lance Armstrong on that. <laughs> well, explain this to me, guys. When you say committee release, now is that a hand selected like batch of of that um, bottling? You'll have you'll you'll have more knowledge about this one, uh, Josh. Yeah, so I'll grab one here. Um, this is a new one. So every year Ardbeg comes up with a, a new whiskey they're going to put out, right? right. So, so last year it was Grooves, uh, and mm -hmm. Grooves was so named because it was extra deep charred casks. So it makes yep. the inside of the cask kind of look like alligator skin. Yep. So there were deep grooves in these. I think it was X, X red wine of some kind. Yeah, it was an X red wine. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this year it's the Ardbeg Drum, which is yep. uh, which is matured in X rum casks, and so yep. there you go. You can see comparison, like even in the style of the label and everything, it's totally different. Right. Um, the committee release is sort of the limited first release of of the uh, special one for the year, and so it's it's brought out at the higher proof, you know, like cast strength. Um, so this is 52%. Mm -hmm. um, 
this this is available for a limited time and i believe in europe like this i just bought in a store here mm -hmm. and, it, and you know once it's gone it's gone right. uh i think in europe you have to be a member of their art bag committee and you order it via mail right and you know once they sell out from the distillery you can't get it anymore but it doesn't work that way for us in the us um later in the year they'll come out with a regular release that's more widely available that'll be more like say 43 percent right okay. so this is kind of the special cask strength specially all, selected variation that's only available for a short time they're always in my the three committee releases that i've had have, have always outshone 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 <laughs> Oh, outshined it. Words are hard. <laughs> Words are hard at this point, but outshone um, the um, the standard release. The standard release is still good, but like when I ha I had the regular Dark Cove, and I was like, "Oh, this is amazing," and then I just simply smelled the committee release, and I was like, uh, uh, "What's that one over there?" It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but I want this all the time. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, Eric, Eric Waits saying he'll send you a sample of the yard bag drum. So it's a weird, it's a weird, it's a, it's a weird flex, but you know. <laughs> so today, Eric, I actually saw my local stores posted a picture of the drum. This was at like maybe eight p.m. my time, so I can check in the morning, but they they're probably gone by now. I I can't imagine they got very much here. You know, it's funny. Uh, I went to. The day that it became available, uh, I went to the spec store that's near downtown Austin and they had the, you know, they had, they got one case, right. Mm -hmm. And there were four left when I got there. Um, <laughs> my friend Jared with the art bag collection took one of them and then there was like somebody else came through and then I was the third. So I asked the guy, I said, Hey man, um, I'm out, like, can I get more than one of these? He's like, absolutely not. <laughs> just get you one and get out of here, right? Uh, one, per, one per person. I can't be doing that. I'm like, okay, okay. I just had to ask. And so yeah. I went to I went to the one other spec store, I believe, in the state that had a case that day. And mm -hmm. I show up, and this was like a little further out of town, right? Like yep. not not the one that everybody goes to. And I walk in. They don't even know what I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> And I show them a picture. I'm being very nice. I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, could you check in the back? Like it says you have it. And and this girl's like, yeah, I'll go take a look. So she goes back and finds the case of of drum committee release. And uh, she goes, yeah. So how many do you want? I'm like, uh, how many can you sell me? She's yeah. like, you want the case? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take six. <laughs> sure. So, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I could probably hang on to them and sell them at a profit later or something maybe, but right. I, I made sure that a bunch of other friends that I knew wanted to get one had the right. opportunity to buy one and like, I just sold them off and kept one for myself. No, absolutely. And that, and I know Eric did the same thing. I mean, he got lucky and found a, six at his store and bought them and he's already sure. sent some to some other people. So it's, you know, that's the way to do it. So I think that's awesome. But yeah. the, the, the rum, the rum cast finish. Now that's interesting to me because I don't think I've ever had anything. I can't remember, you know, that's been rum finished, but that'll add a different level of sweetness, I would think. Yeah, it's not heavily uh, influenced by the rum. I don't think. Uh, in my opinion, it's kind of like if you took Ardbeg Ten, bottled it at cast strength, and added. Uh -huh kind of tropical fruits that you would get from a rum and also kind of this like dark molasses and slight funkiness that you get from a rum as well. What's the mouth feel on it? <laughs> Hashtag mouth. <laughs> Hashtag uh, mouth feel. <laughs> you know, I've only had like two, well, no, I had a little bit up at iron root with those just guys. Just pour some now. Okay. Yeah, just do it. I twisted my arm. I, I want a full review, Josh. Okay. What are you pouring next, Chris? Because I, I I just pour myself some Octomore seven point one into the glass. Octomore. I don't have anything higher, Pete, than the than the ten or the Ugadil. It's okay. You're fine. Right. Ba baby steps. Don't go. Don't go crazy. <laughs> <sighs> I should have got the Octomore. I should have got the Octomore. Was there an Octomore available? No. I, I about uh, five six months ago there was one I saw that was. I can't remember which one it was, but it was posted. And at that time it wasn't discussed at all, so I didn't care, you know, at yeah. all. But. But now, 
nowadays, now that I know I like Pete, I would have been all over that. Yeah, and Octomore is an interesting case because, um, or an interesting example because it's mostly, unless you get the 10 year old, it's mostly five years old. Yep. So it's wow. a very, it's young and spirity and aggressive, right? But it's, it'll, it's it'll, it'll, it'll slap you around real good. Yeah. And they're always cast strength. So you'll get them at like 59% or something. It's, it's exactly. meant to be about this kind of punch you in the face intensity. Yeah. 59.5. So a hundred, 119 uh, proof. That sounds great. Honestly, that sounds great. But you know, the thing with the Octomores and when you, if you ever end up trying or buying a bottle, you'll see the high PPM, right? The part, the P yep. per, per, uh, per million. And you're like, oh, it's going to be peaty. This is one of the most balanced whiskeys I've ever tasted in my life. Right. Um, the, thing, the thing about PPM is it can really depend on, it's one of those things I think about it. It's like listing Watts on an amplifier or something like it doesn't really tell the whole story and it depends on how they measured it. Right. Like if um, I think it was uh, a knock, that started releasing these whiskeys that where it says it's like, you know, 23 PPM or 13 PPM because they were trying to measure it after distillation, after maturation, like actually what's in the bottle in the finished whiskey In other places like say, say uh, Bricolati doing Octomore, uh, they're measuring it on the barley before it's been even ground and fermented and distilled. Right. So they're getting a much, much higher number, which looks great on like a spec sheet for a bottle. Right. But uh, it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. But that said, I mean, Octomore is is an intense experience generally. So but it's just funny that the number the number only means something in context, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people are talking about the uh, the lag of uh, the lag of Vulans right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the lag yeah, but That's my next that wants to be my next 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 purchase. Yeah, the Lagavulin Eight's a great young young peated whiskey. Yep. Uh, the 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 Game of Thrones Nine is very much, and I was I was discussing this. Uh, I was discussing this. Someone commented on my review of the Game of Thrones Nine, um, and ask asking him. Uh, he asked me like you know, um, if you could choose between the nine or the eight or the sixteen, like where would you go? And uh, the two younger ones, the eight and the nine, are are great because they're young, aggressive, very peat forward whiskeys, and they both even the one year difference in the two. Sure, so much difference between the two. I found um, that they're both worth it. Then when you go into the sixteen year, when you when you age peat it kind of diminishes a little bit does not as it's not as Definitely. aggressive but everything else kind of rounds rounds it out so it's not as spiky you start getting a lot more complexity and how i described it um yeah. in the comment was a ron swanson like class <laughs> speaking of there's a there's what like an 11 year old or something coming out that's nick offerman edition yeah there's a 11, yeah. 11 year old nick offerman edition lagavulin that's supposed to be releasing sometime in the summer this year if i'm not mistaken yeah um and uh yeah the um if you like the aggressive more aggressive peatiness stick mm -hmm. to the younger younger islas if you want more complexity and uh the, something that's a little more understated yeah mm -hmm. then you go into the higher higher age stuff but you will be paying a lot more for the higher age stuff from isla well and that always interests me with the lagavulin because I mean, like the eight, they had the eight year and then the nine year, the Game of Thrones release was one year difference. I was like, well, there can't be much difference between those two. Oh, well, yeah. But then when I talked to people, there really was like, yeah. it was actually a big difference. It caught me off guard. 16, but. And, you know, age statement in Scotch, that's the, uh, that always has to be the youngest whiskey that's in the bottle. Correct. So, like, yeah. you know, it depends on how they blended it as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it could have older, younger, well, not younger, but you could have a greater content of young whiskey versus a greater content of old whiskey. It depends, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's all about that 12-year-old, though. 
Eric just talked to, just brought up the twelve year old as well. The, tw- the the which one do you, you've tried the seventeen, right, Josh? I've tried the sixteen and the seventeen. I what do I have here? Is the sixteen? Sixteen. The, yeah. the twelve year six. Uh, the twelve year twenty seventeen edition bottling is what I rated my best, my favorite whiskey of last year. Wow, um, it was. Uh, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Hmm. Uh, just goddamn. Yeah, that's uh, the thing about the twelve is its cast strength. Yes, yeah, cast strength, and it's different oh, yeah. every year. Every year that they release it, they've been doing it since two thousand and one or two. Every year they've done it, it's tasted different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've had the sixteen and the seventeen side by side, and you know you can tell the difference is subtle for sure. You know, but they, but they are not the same. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, it's, there's a distinction. Yeah. Um, but apparently the 2018 is a little bit underwhelming. Yeah, I haven't had the 18. Well, I haven't had it either. But from what I've heard from from a couple of people, um, that uh, 2018. But it, that's the thing is like it's always compared to the year prior, right? Yeah. And 2018 was just unbelievably magical and uh, even sniper mac up my, my buddy mike um said it's his favorite whiskey he's drank this year it's unreal um yeah guys this 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 our big drum <laughs> it's yeah so we haven't even talked about that yet. yeah we haven't talked about the whiskeys oh it's so good <laughs> oh, now i need to check in the morning it's Nine a.m. I'm going to show up at the liquor store looking for looking for whiskey. Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny is uh, uh, I know a couple of guys that that run the you know just gotten to chat with them and and know the guys that run the liquor stores around here, the mom, mom and pop type stores. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one guy Raj that runs Oak Liquor Cabinet, I was standing talking to him the other day, and uh, he's actually doing the the single barrel pick that I have of Iron Root uh, Bourbon coming out. Nice. Should be bottled here in a few weeks. Uh, awesome. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be selling that, so that's cool. But uh, he he had several people like just pop into the store and like walk around and you say hey, I help you with anything or whatever. No, no, no. And then they just walk out like two minutes later, right? Because they're trying to see if they can walk in and find some kind of unicorn thing just hanging out on the shelf. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're looking for like, uh, you know, a Blanton's or they're looking for right. Elijah Craig barrel proof or, you know, some of these desirable things to see if they can just be the lucky guy to snag it. And it happened like it was probably there for an hour. It happened three, four times. Yeah. <laughs> Dude's just wandering in looking to see if they can find that that bottle there. Uh, it's on their radar. Yeah, it's it's true, though. It's happening all over. I mean, I. I went to my local place a couple weeks back and just randomly they were getting their truck right as I came in. So I got a stag junior that was on the truck, but he only got like three of them, mm-hmm. you know, so it's just, it's all just completely random. I mean, I just got lucky today, you know, and the allocation of it too, like which markets, which bottles go to is kind of crazy. Like I've, I've, been to places where there's just Blanton's on the shelf all day long and yeah, every, yeah. every store has it and there's stag junior, just mounds of it. Right. Like, and, uh, and then around here, it's some of that sh- stuff's just impossible to find. So. For David, I see that message. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to check tomorrow first, but I'll definitely be in contact otherwise because based on uh, Josh's thoughts there, I definitely <laughs> might be looking for a bottle now that I'm, enjoying this scotch so much yeah the uh the 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 little bit of rum funk kind of comes out it's uh definitely got that tropical fruit like banana pineapple kind of thing going on and um have you had uh, have you had any um actual like rums you've had because now they're starting to do store picks on rums and stuff too like pillars or whatever they call that yeah i've definitely had some nice ones um but i i don't I'm not nearly as well versed in that as I am in the whiskey world. Right. Not even close. So I, you know, I could probably recognize a handful of nice ones that I've tried on a store shelf and go, oh, I remember that one being good, but that's that's about it. Right. Right. Same with stuff like tequila mezcal. Like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know as much about it. Yeah. Yeah, but I've only had, like, I'm not a huge fan of tequila or rum, but ev- like every time I'm with one of my buddies that 
Like I have a, a, a friend that loves sipping tequila. So we'll always have like weird and expensive tequilas that, you know, I can, you know, sample from. Ask me to remember the names. I won't remember the names. <laughs> uh, and I have a buddy that does the same thing with rum and like, he'll always have any, he's ridiculous. He'll have like three, four, five hundred dollar $500 bottles that he gets imported uh, that are like unbelievable. Ask again, ask me to remember no chance, but um, yeah, like bought like standard shelf stuff. I'm not a big fan of, but the expensive tequilas and rums are something on another level for for me. Really? Can you get uh, Can you get Armagnac? I believe so. Like uh, sounds probably, familiar. Probably not much. I mean, it's it's like cognac or brandy, but it's just made in a different region in France. Yeah, I, I, it sounds very familiar. I'm sure I've seen it at the LCBO a couple of times. Yeah, and a bit a bit of a different process and stuff yeah. like that to it, I think. But uh, that's something I've been getting super curious about. Like, um, <laughs> I did I did once get uh, I get to raid Jared Hempstead's uh, liquor cabinet at Balcones, and he brought out some forty something year old Armagnac. <laughs> like, I bet this is going to be awesome, and it was. And uh, yeah, actually, just a couple of weeks ago too, when I was up in Dallas, I was hanging out with uh, with Robert from Iron Root, and he busted out some forty seven year old bottle of Armagnac. And that stuff, I mean, wow, that stuff it's not nearly as popular or as as uh, well known as as you know whiskeys or even rums or whatever. So you can get these crazy old bottles for, mm -hmm. and they'll still be a bit expensive, but compared to what you would pay in the whiskey world, it's yeah. like half the price or less, right? Well, and I was just thinking like the flavor profile, like now that you've tried multiple rums, you can definitely pick up more flavors from the drum that like oh, yeah. I couldn't, I, I've only had, you know, the very base rums, you know, and whatever, but. And that's, uh, that's what I've been wanting to do a little bit with like sherry and port and stuff like that. Try exactly Yeah, absolutely. That. You know, because I'm, I'm used to picking those things up in a whiskey context and so I can kind of recognize it, but. Right. Uh, I feel like I would know more about it if I sampled, you know. Uh, various examples of different styles of sherry, for example. Right. Yeah. Loch Ness says, uh, Vito, uh, just FYI, live streams are usually one hour per person. So you guys need to go for three hours at least. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I do have I, shit to do tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Some of us have, I mean, if you look at my glasses, glasses here, right. I've already done quite a, quite a dent here in the glasses. So, I mean, I've got more, more, more in the background here, so we're good, but. I've got, I've used up all my Roy coins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No I, doubt. I got one more glass. I have a bit more Octomore and I have uh, one last whiskey to, to, to pour. The, uh, you have, Oct you poured Octomore right now? I poured Octomore already. Yeah. The What's seven, point, the 7.1 is what I have in my glass at the moment. Gotcha. Well, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to go into this or not. And I've used all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of my glasses. My God, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, Ed! Ed just showed up from Rock Gut Review. How late are you? Uh, about two hours, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's it going? Yeah. Welcome in. Thanks for coming. Now, I talked to you guys a little bit about this before the stream, but I reached out to a micro distillery near me here. It's called Grand Traverse Distillery. Yeah. And they gave me a couple bottle samples, and this was included. Now, this is an Islay Rye. That's, and that's, this is very interesting to me. Um, that's crazy, man. I looked it up earlier when you when you sent me a picture of that. Yeah. I've never heard of such a thing in my entire life. Yeah. But, and Vito mentioned something that was kind of similar. Vito, what did you say about the, the Islay Rye that might be similar? Oh, well, from what I was looking at it, it it's, it's a, it's, um, the mash is, tw um, uh, 80% rye, if I'm not mistaken, 20% malt, peated malted barley. Yeah, that's what I remember too. That sounds right. Right. So it, it, it kind of, it, it, that's, and that's what I just poured myself. I just poured some high West campfire because it's a blend that includes a peated scotch in it. Yeah. Um, now, what I was curious about is, and I couldn't find any information, and Josh, you probably did a bit, may have looked into it a little bit more. But did they source the peat and smoke the bone barley, or did they did they import our like pre-smoked uh, barley? 
Cream peed in Parliament. Yeah, that I don't know. My I, my guess would be that it was peated and then shipped. Yeah. So like I I I, I I'm curious about the 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 process that process that they used. Um, but I poured the ha the campfire just so I can kind of go along with what you're doing. Yeah. This I think a bit more heavy on the rye than it is on the uh, the corn. Uh, if I remember correct. Yeah, I don't know the proportions in campfire, but it's it's so funny that you like. I guess it makes sense, but that was the exact same comparison I made. Yeah, I was like, oh, that. I wonder how different that is from campfire. Yeah, because because it, it's 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 an American distillery, right? Mm -hmm. That source that yep. that that. I believe is sourcing everything, uh, sourcing the peat uh, and all that. So I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm I, I'm I'm genuinely interested in in what you have to say about this one. Yeah, yeah. super interesting. And it says on the back here they they non chill filter it. Um, it doesn't say specifics on where the the rye um, or the the Isle barley is from. So I'm not really sure. You know. Yeah, that's that's a unique one, man. So but it, yeah, it definitely seem unique. And Scott, I was just looking. Scott in here said um, he's had Grand Traverse bourbon, and it tastes a little young. Mm -hmm. Not bad, but needs more time. Yeah, Scott. They, they. I was talking to the owner there, and he, you know, he mentioned some stuff about their distillery, and they're using all local grains. They're not sourcing anything at all, which is really nice. You know, yeah. at least they're doing it the right way. Ooh, wee, that's different. Really. Oh yeah! Wow. Have you had the campfire before, uh, Chris? Yes, I actually when I when I did my Heaven Hill tasting about two weeks ago, um, the owner over there was buying <laughs> buying drinks, and that was one of them. He he got us, and uh, it was really good. Like you could definitely taste the peat in it, but mm -hmm. it had a whole other level of sweetness that was just you could yeah. tell it was some bourbon influence on it. You know. Yeah, High West uh, generally kills it. Like, <laughs> you know, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't say much bad about them. Uh, I'm no, not. They're, they're doing really well. I mean, in what virtually everything they they blend, but it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the American Prairie Eric and I did a couple weeks ago on our live stream, and it was. I mean, it was it was very average, but the campfire was significantly better. I mean, it yeah. was it was very good. What I like in the American Prairie actually is I've seen several uh, unusual cask finishes. Like you know, stores will do um, special runs of that. Like I have a Total Wine um, American Prairie that was yes. uh, finished in Manhattan barrels. Yes, yes, I've seen that. Oh, that's just really good. Really good. Uh, and I have another one that I acquired somewhere somehow, but I haven't opened yet. That's some sort of, I think it's white Zinfandel wine finished, which is totally that, unusual. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. So, so, so this just smells like candy. I mean, it smells like literal candy in a glass. I can't, I can't taste the campfire. <laughs> so, so yeah. That was a mistake. I, I wanted to save it to the end because I wanted I wanted to try it with with the Isla, but yeah, yeah, I, I can smell it. I can't taste it. Oh, Let's that's see. right. Uh, the Jeffrey Patron uh, was was the one that brought that uh, white Zinfandel finished uh, High West American Prairie. That's right. You just let me know that. That would be really interesting. I mean, that's got to taste completely different. Yeah, I, I haven't even opened it yet because I was gonna like finish the Manhattan one first and then dive into that. But yeah. Mm. So on the nose, to me, the, this this eye layer has a complete like extra level of sweetness. Um, it does not smell old at all. It smells very young. Hmm. Do you get the peatiness in there though? Or is it a smoky? Just like not even not really. I mean a little bit, but I mean you gotta think I'm coming off the back of an art bag. Yeah. True, true. That's why like I can't this the campfire is ruined. Yeah. It, it normally... tastes, I mean it tastes it does taste like a rye, I'd say. Like it's very it's very cinnamon 
a little pepper note. Um, yeah. Now this only comes in at 90 proof. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very like sometimes in rye, I'll describe, describe like a candy, like almost like a smarty sweet tart, that smarty candy note. It, it's got that for sure. Absolutely. Not much peat though. Honestly, it does not smell or taste like much peat, but I think that's probably because of what I drank already. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, it'd be interesting to try that with a fresh palate, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll be interested when I actually do a review of this when I haven't had anything else. Because it's definitely unique. I mean, I like what we were talking about. I've never seen anything like that. So definitely unique. So and it's not bad. It's not bad. It just tastes kind of young. Mm -hmm. Not much of a finish. Mm. Interesting question in the chat from Moose76. I, I was just going to ask the same thing. Go for right. it. Uh, biggest surprise whiskey so far this year. So here's my, question. my, my question back to him. 2019 or calen or like 364 days ago. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm I'm going to go with this year meaning 2019. Yeah, agreed. Mm, fuck. What new one have I had? <laughs> mm. Oh, um it's not really a surprise. Okay, go ahead. Let me think about it for a second. I mean, I got to think about it too. Surprise. That's why I thought it was interesting like What's a surprise whiskey? Um, I haven't bought anything, anything super. I haven't bought anything this year that I haven't already had last year that I tried. Like most of my purchases have been things I've tried that I was like, I can buy a bottle now. Let me buy the bottle now. Yeah, I will. I will tell you. Uh, I am surprised. I anticipated that I was going to love Red Spot, mm. and I am surprised that I do not love Red Spot. Yeah, and you're not the only one to say that, though. You're not the only one to say that. It's fine, and I had some with a cigar the other day, mm -hmm. and, and it was a nice pairing to that. Yeah. But still, like... I'd put a bunch of other Irish whiskeys above Red Spot. Mm. Uh, in terms of a positive surprise, though, um, God, oh, there was this, there was this interesting single malt. Oh, where was it out of? I, I'm going to struggle to remember the name of it because uh, the Iron Root guys poured me a little bit of it, and they have this tiny little bottle. It's about the same size bottle as those Bricolati samplers. Yep, that you have. And uh, it was an American single malt that was finished in PX Sherry, I want to say. Mm. Something like that. And that was really, really good. Gosh, I can't mm. remember the name of it now. I'm going to have to find that out. That was surprising. There was also, oh, an Edradour. I tried that same day uh, that was uh, brought back from uh, England, I believe. And I was not a big fan of the Edradours I've had before. Um, especially the heavily peated uh, ten-year-old. Yeah, ten-year-old. I was not a big fan, uh, but this was just magnificent, magnificent stuff. Came in this cool, like dyed wood box, and it, nice, yeah, gorgeous presentation. Yeah, as far as um, bourbon goes, I mean, Christopher David mentioned the Old Forester Rye, and that was actually a pleasant surprise for me. Um, it was hyped up so much, and I didn't know if I would, if it would live up to the hype or not, but. Honestly, like I would say that rye kind of leaned more towards what a scotch is because that has really? a high barley mash bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they use I can't remember the percentages now. It's been so long since I've had it. I still have a bottle, but um, they use a lot more barley in that, and it had that floral, the floral sweetness in it that you you'll find in a lot of scotches. Nice. That was actually really nice. I really like that one. Mm -hmm. Um. What? E Green said, "Biggest surprise: Balcones True Blue Cast Strength." Yeah, man, that's fabulous stuff. Especially this year's this tenth anniversary one. Fantastic stuff. Um, I think my favorite, uh, my surprise so far was how much I enjoyed the Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was on. I was talking with Brad the other night on um uh, just like uh, just hanging out, whatever, and. At the end of the night, I had poured myself four, you know, four pours of it, 
without pretty much realizing it. I was like, I, I kind of don't want to go to another whiskey right now. And I just kept on pouring <laughs> the Black Creek. It's like, I kind of want to stay on this right now. And yeah, and it's 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 definitely a, a the 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 biggest surprise that I I don't usually do that. I don't normally pour multiples of a single whiskey at, in a night, and I found myself re-pouring the Knob Creek that night. Um, Dare we say we're bringing you over to the bourbon side a little bit? <laughs> just, a, just, just a little bit. Just, just a little? All right. Well, I think you've definitely brought me over to the Scotch side tonight, so <laughs> my gosh, this... Uh, oh, I'll, so never, I'll, never give, I'll never give the bourbon, the bourbon brigade the, the respect it deserves just because of a friend of ours, James, who's just a real, just a uh, uh, bourbon guy. Just, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what does the scotch taste like? It tastes like peat and scotch. Yeah. <laughs> They'll never admit it. So I, I have a, I have this weird sort of built-in filter that says I'll never admit to fully enjoying bourbon yeah. just because of him. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. It, I, I every you know what bourbon bourbon's good i i like it that knob creek is really good and i'm glad i glad i got a bottle of that so yep yeah so, vito, vito, have you have you ever, the, um, vito have you ever had any of the elijah gray barrel proofs oh yeah i have not because oh. it, i have it hasn't popped up in canada as far as i've oh. been uh aware or made known of that's what's up yeah, yeah. i really want to i really want to try the, I really want to get a, a, a um, an Elijah Craig barrel proof because everyone says how good they are. So, oh, if you think that the the Knob Creek single barrel is good, like if you went to four pours, you'd have like fifteen or twenty pours of that Elijah Craig barrel proof. Well, if it's I had if I had some Booker's um, uh, Kathleen's batch, I'd I'd probably go through like a bottle a week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I got a half a bottle left. Come on over. Uh, you're, not, you're, you're not that far away from me, really. No, no. I mean, true. I mean, I, I'm, I'm willing to make a weekend trip. Drive. I'm willing to make a weekend trip. I'll tell you. I'll bring a lot of stuff. So Scott from uh, Scotch Test Dummies jogged my memory on that Edradour. Uh, it's actually the the Balakin, 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 and Balchin, Balinchin. Yeah, uh, I, re I remember the details on that. It was a STFC, which I, I believe stands for straight from the cask. Uh, <coughs> Eleven-year-old Bordeaux cask matured, which uh, which I had at Iron. That was surprising. I was expecting to not like it because I just haven't cared for everything else, Balakin, Balakin, that I've that I've had before, and it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, now I've seen a lot of people commenting the uh, Lafroy Ten Cast Strength. Thoughts on that? I need to get me a bottle ASAP. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. Um, I I really like that Fino cask uh, um, of the uh, Cargus and the uh, the Madeira. The Madeira is nice too. Josh, which but. which which Fino? Because the one I have. I don't have the the year, but it's fifty one point eight percent. Yeah, that would be that'd be the one. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same one that you have. Yeah. I I'm not gonna pour it tonight, but we'll pour it one night when I can taste things again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I got. I still have just a touch of octa more left. So. Yep. Uh, what are we? What? Where are we right now? Two hours. Yeah. Just over. Just over two hours. Now, normally I only go an hour, but I mean, I really wanted to learn about some scotch. So I think you can this keep on good. going. I got I got nothing going on tomorrow. So <laughs> Vito just wants an excuse to keep drinking. I know? mean, I'll just keep on drinking the Octomore at this point because uh, that's all I can taste. But yeah, I'm, no I'm, doubt. I'm, I'm good to keep on drinking and, and talking. Yeah. Yeah. Five, and, until, until the point where we can't even speak our words anymore you know we were like, <laughs> doing, so. uh so i saw william uh devilar in the chat yep. yeah uh, I'm sorry if i butchered your name there but um asking a question right up my alley what american single malts are you guys preferring uh well balcones for sure 
no question. Every variation of their single malt, all the cask finishes and stuff like that, I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of. But outside of that, um, Andalusia single malt uh, out of, out of uh, Blanco, Texas are really good. Uh, getting outside of Texas, um, Del Bach does a great job and they have some cool mesquite smoke single malt as well as Cole Keegan. I was going to say the Cole Keegan. Don't forget about that. Cole Keegan out of Santa Fe. Uh, when, when Gretchen and I went on, on vacation, uh, last time we decided to go to Santa Fe cause it was close enough to, uh, bring, bring our dog in the car. Uh, it was drivable. Right. And we went to Santa Fe spirits while we were there, did a tour and, and, uh, hung out with the guys there and uh, it was not only a fantastic time, but an amazingly delicious whiskey. They do a uh, single malt, so it's all barley, right? But 30% of the barley that goes into their uh, mash bill is, is mesquite smoked. So it's, uh, it's just so, so good. What, uh, what did you say the name of that place was? I'm going to write that down. Cold uh, the, the, the distillery is called Santa Fe Spirits. Okay. But the, the single malt whiskey is named Cole Keegan because Cole the guy Keegan. the guy that owns the place is named Colin Keegan. So gotcha. Yeah. Uh Cole Keegan's great. Uh Stranahan's does a nice job too. I like their Diamond Peak a lot. Westland has a good single malt too. Westland is a good one. I'm not as big of a fan personally of the sherry or the peated, but just the regular. Westland single malt's really good. And if you can get any of those special editions, they have like, there's one, uh, there's like a special type of oak called Gariana oak that they release like maybe once a year or something like that. You can get the Gariana edition. That, that's really interesting. Um, oh, you guys are making me want to buy just everything in the world. <laughs> <of whiskey. laughs> Lockness says he can barely see the screen on his phone to chat with the group. Way too many drams tonight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, buddy. We're, we're right here together don't worry about it you're right i mean like there's so many and now with the micro distilleries coming up everywhere there's just so many options out there i just like josh and i and vito and i both were talking about this with texas whiskey alone like i have not had any texas whiskey yet mm -hmm. and that's a whole other world of whiskey there's yeah so many it's ridiculous in texas that i want to try it's just ugh. And it's its own thing. Like, you know, if you go buying Texas bourbon, even even some of the ones that are maybe the most close-ish to Kentucky bourbon, it's not the same thing. It's no. it's a different deal. Yeah, um, uh, yeah and it's, it's all interesting, and, and I love it. I saw Mark Goins in the chat asked if, if this was still available. It happens to be sitting across from me. The Balcones Mirador. Uh which I have a nice, have a nice story about that real quickly. But uh, is it still available? You can find it around here uh, in in stores still. But uh, my understanding is that they're going to be re-releasing it as a more permanent thing. Uh, this was the first edition of right. But uh, I, my understanding is you'll you'll be seeing Mirador again very soon um, in, in another release. Uh, actually, uh, Zach, Zach that just passed away yesterday, um, he came to Wizard Academy. It was the night before the Crowded Barrel opening, and and I had invited him to come and hang out with, you know, Vito was there and and just a whole crowd of people. We were down at at Crowded Barrel, or well, down at the the lodging at wizard Academy and just a bunch of people hanging out and a bunch of whiskey folks. That's actually the first place, first place I met Jonathan from iron root as well. And, um, was he there that night? Yeah. God damn it. Jonathan was there. <laughs> not Robert. Robert was, was not there, but Jonathan was, He's I Robert. was just for context. I was bombed. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I invited Zach and, and, you know, we, we got him there and um, he brought something specifically for me to try. This was like his new creation. He had been working on with Jared and, and everybody there and he was really excited and proud and he brought a, spe a sample specifically wanted to see what I thought about it. And uh, that turned out to be Mirador. Nice. Before Very it came cool. out. 
Yeah, I think I think I remember having. I think because he, he had he brought it in in um, larger sample ish bottle. Right, like it was an it was an unmarked or, or yeah, like yeah, label type thing, and he's like, cool. "Check this out." We were doing with some used oak, and they were aging whiskey in uh in barrels that used to hold their rumble spirit, yeah. and then aging malt whiskey in there, and uh, some of the oldest whiskey in the distillery as well. So um, yeah, he he brought this sample. He's like, "Oh, I brought this. I want you to try it," and I'm really proud of it and everything. And that's what it turned out to be it was Mirador. Wow. You know, that came out a few months later. So that's so cool to be able to try something before it got released. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I think yeah. I tried it, but yeah. And I, I talked, to, I talked to Zach that night. Um, such a nice guy, too. Real, real shame. Yeah, he's he was uh, just so soft spoken and kind and and like almost shy. But once you got him talking about the things he was passionate about, he was you know, relentless. You get him talking about whiskey, man. And he just would blow your mind with like the depth of his knowledge and the way that he would, the way that he would be able to communicate uh, all of these details and, and, and his thoughts about the whiskey and just kind of make you have a deeper understanding. I learned a ton of things from him. Just, just, uh, the handful of times I was able to spend a significant amount of time sort of picking his brain was uh, hugely informative to me. Um, the last time I saw him, actually, we were doing our, I went to a blending master class at Balcones and we were uh, creating our own custom blends of, of Balcones single malts. And I was getting a little frustrated because I didn't like, I don't know what a good approach is to blending whiskey, man. I don't know where to start. And like, you know what to do and i was trying different things and i thought i had a good idea and then i didn't like how it turned it turned out and i was sit and talk to zach for like 10 minutes i'm like dude what am i doing wrong how am i supposed to do this i don't even know what the right approach is like where should i start and he gave me his whole explanation of like well in general here's how i think about blending whiskey you should start with this and then maybe try and correct for what it's missing with something that's present in another sample and, you know, and don't try and overdo it and don't try and take different things that you just like them and slap them together because that's not going to work. And, uh, after learning a little bit about his thought process, I was able to come up with something that I thought was really good, you know, using, using like his education. Yeah, that's really cool though. I mean, uh, that, just think about being like a, a blender for a distillery. Like how hard of a job would that be? Oh yeah. You know, which barrels to go to, to, to blend together, to get the flavor profile you want. Like that's gotta be so, especially on, on the scale of even like a Balcones. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the scale that they have is just ridiculous. It's gotta be hard, but it's also gotta be extremely rewarding, especially if you're smart. Oh yeah. Passionate about it. So like, yeah. Imagine how disciplined you have to be too, right? Like, you are <laughs> going to be drinking high proof cast strength whiskey all the time, all day, all day, every day. And you have to know, you have to be able to say, you know what? I, I can't do this anymore because my palate is shot. Even, yep. if, you, even if you've been spitting it out and everything, like at a certain point, you can't yep. do that job effectively anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Completely. I agree. That's, I mean, it's a tough job, but someone has to do it. You know? <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> God, God bless them. Here's to them. One, yeah. uh, one last, uh, one last uh, cheers uh, to Zach and everything he's done and everyone he's touched. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Zach. cheers. All right, guys. Well, I hate to say it, but we better think about wrapping up. It's been going on two and a half hours here. <laughs> yeah. we're the longest watching. live stream ever. Big, big territory here. I mean, we're pushing it. So, I mean, if we keep on going, we'd have to challenge uh, Scott and Bart for their um, what, what do they call 12 it? Hours, twelve hours of boom. Oh, yeah, twelve hours of boom. Uh -huh. So yeah, hell, I'd be I'd be down to do that at some point. I'll just have to make sure I'm I got nothing to go <laughs> go on the next day. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, but this was awesome, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, Thank Josh, you. I'm so glad you could make it too. I mean, yeah, I wasn't sure if you'd be able to make it after uh, you know Vito and I went on last time. So glad to have you here and got the most of the cast strength here. We'll, we'll hopefully catch Brad on the next one. But yeah, absolutely, man. It was a, it's a load of fun. Always good to like just sit and chat with whiskey folks.
Yeah, for sure. And thank you. Thank you guys both so much for educating me on all this scotch stuff. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it's, it's an easy transition for me. Um, I think I'm going to find myself buying a lot more scotch and branch out a lot more. And if there. you guys are willing, I'd like to do this more often. Um, more crossovers like this. I, I love talking to you guys about this and learning about this kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We're always, we're always available. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to move to a different, uh, like we did a lot of Islay today. So like maybe move to a different part of Scotland and talk about some uh, some other types of scotch. School me on that maybe. That'd be oh, yeah. really cool. If, if I can get you some of the Glen Goyne and some other stuff, um, we can definitely talk about like island, um, Highlands and some Sherry stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure we'll figure it out off, off, off uh, stream. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great time, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, William Devilar just mentioned it. Head to Discord. So I do have a Discord. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what Discord is, but yeah, yeah. so Discord is the way we can actually just get on voice chat with each other. We can jump into video and, and audio chats with each other and kind of talk some more afterwards. So if you guys are in interested in that, just check out uh, Bourbon Sane on Discord, and we'll, we we can all jump in there and uh, and chat it up. So. But thank you all so much for coming out. Happy Friday night. Thanks for joining us. I know there's a lot of stuff you could have been doing on on a Friday, but uh, <laughs> Eric, wait. I love, not I lay. All right, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm still oh, new. I'm still new to Scott. Okay? He, is, he is correct. I love. For a couple weeks, I get, a, I get an excuse. So. It's his, it's his, it's his, uh, mi um, a Michigan, Michigan accent. <laughs> it is. It's the accent. It's the northern, northern United States accent. I'll, I'll blame that, you know. There you go. Yeah, but no, thank you all so much for coming. It was a great time. Thanks for hanging out. We'll do it again soon. I'll see you guys later. Peace.